No, we need we need we the realness. We are live. It's official, baby. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here on another live session with my co-host, Ryan Ketchum. Absolutely. And listen, if you are new to the live, just remember, this is our second episode. So this is very new to the channel. Yeah. Be patient with us because we're going to get launched and locked and loaded in about five minutes. So let me check this out. Click, click. At about 8.40, we're getting ready to get started. And it's going to be fun, y'all, oh, because, yeah. man, we have imported y'all something very special straight from the island. You just say you import me? <laughs> yes. How much was my plane fare? You import me? How oh. much was my plane fare to come here? We are in here with Julie Mango. <laughs> I, mean, the, I come here before you, you know. What you mean? But you import me. You don't like that? No. That's, that means special. That means you're special. No, no. Well, I agree with that. You're special. You, you can only import something that is special and is a good. But exactly, that you is import good. things that is, a, is goods. Good. I'm good, not goods. I'm good, not goods. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yo, welcome to the show, guys. So if you haven't checked this out already, we just dropped the episode yesterday. This was uh, Dr. Bobby Price. And yes. Dr. Bobby Price, he went so crazy on diet and nutrition, man. Yes. I was feeling bad because if y'all don't know, sometimes the episodes will fill them a couple weeks in, in advance. And this particular episode is all about health. So it's crazy because I just recently, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, I just recently went to urgent care because I thought I was about to have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. I had this crazy chest pain. It was like, it, it started right in the middle, and it spread to like my entire... Was it angina? What was What's that? What, I, was, I don't know what that is. What is that is. called? Say it again. Angina. Angina? Yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, it, he, he, he does have angina. He, he, he has been eating a lot of that too, so <laughs> <laughs> it probably is some of that. <laughs> no, I, well, you can't, can't eat too wait, much wait, Tell me, what, what is angina? What is it? What angina is, is a mild heart attack. No, no, no. So what Definitely it was is Definitely not what. Yes, no, not no, no ginas. It was okay. no ginas. Not that type no of ginas. ginas. So okay, so listen, what it was is that uh, well, actually, it's undetermined what it was. So I got an EKG. They said it's not cardiovascular. So what the doctor tried to tell me was that it was because I could have gotten sick and could have had chest inflammation. Hold on. Tell Sorry. me. Tell me. It's gas pain. It was gas pain. <laughs> it was gas pain. That's what it was. It was gas pain. Wait, I had severe had gas pain. Hey, Jamaicans, big up on the cell. Yo, we know what the remedy is. But check this out. I, I, I had to figure that out. So I literally sat down and I started to think about all the things I had been eating over the past few weeks. And I never used to eat hot foods because it would give me, I'm just, just probably a lot of information, give me hemorrhoid. Like, like my hemorrhoids would, would be, be fucked up. I mean, mess, they would be messed up. <laughs> my hemorrhoids would be messed up. So... I randomly had to eat. I was in a position where I had to eat 10 hot lemon pepper spicy wings. And when I ate them, nothing happened. He didn't have to eat it. He said he had to eat it. Like it was, I was hungry. Was it was a situation. It, it was a situation? A situation. Okay. But so once I ate them and nothing happened, for like the next four weeks, I just ate like 40, 40 wings a, a week. You know, what, you know what I'm curious about, which is insane. Yeah. But you know what I'm curious about? The thing I love about Jamaican women is that they just... <laughs> She just already, she diagnosed you off just five sentences. Which is insane. And they probably know a cure. If somebody yes. got gas pain, what you going to give them? Tea. Tea. What kind of tea? Well, mint tea, seracy, vervine, mm. fever grass, chocolate tea, mm. want to call hot chocolate, cocoa tea, mm. ginger tea, what may I lift off? <laughs> all, all, all teas. All teas. You have a whole leaf, leaf of life tea. See that? It's Everything. a lot of and look, he ain't had yeah. a cup of tea since, have you? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. So I actually I've been Lana, you can pull this up too. Pull pull them watermelons up. So I actually started a a, a seven day watermelon fast to cure myself. To cure self it's my self medication. Who put you on that? Huh? Who put you on that? You put yourself? Me. I put myself on it. Yeah. So well, it's only watermelon you're gonna eat? Yeah, mono fruit. So how you eating grapes? Well well, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> 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 Hey, show the grapes, because no, 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 he's no, definitely no. eating grapes right now. It's grapes, it's grapes. It's no, no, no. <laughs> so, so listen, so I did two days fruit, any kind of fruit and vegetables. Then I'm going to do two days any kind of fruit. Then I'm going to do seven days straight watermelon. So there's like a nine-day fruit fast in total. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy fast. And look, y'all really getting the inside on this man's whole health <laughs> life right now. Let's and get this, this show is started. a reminder <laughs> Let's get of why y'all need to watch 
Dr. Bobby Price so y'all don't end up with your whole chest <laughs> with gas inside of it. So take care of yourself. Extremely painful, Watch the though. Dr. Bobby Price show. It's live right now. <laughs> y'all, this live show is about to be happening every Monday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We started late. We'll be better next time. But listen, it's going to happen every Monday night at 8 p.m. and Wednesday. So we got something special coming for y'all. Let us know where you're from in the chat, too. City and state, let us know where you're from. And Tasha, I'm going to get us kicked off real quick. What's yes. poppin', Ty? Let us know what so is happening. Me, me can't what the is poppin'? And let me tell you something. <laughs> now, that's a surprise for you. I am so excited about this show, y'all, because not only do we got Julie Mango here, who, if for, you, for those of you who don't know, Julie Mango is a wildly popular, wildly successful... Uh, what I, I, I don't want to limit you. I was about to say a Jamaican comedian, okay? But I don't even want to limit you to Jamaica. Yeah. I don't even want to do that. Okay, so this... Although Jamaica is unlimited still, you know? <laughs> that, that is very true. Yeah. That is very true. But so I'm a Jamaican personality because that's my ethnicity, that's my nationality. But my market is everybody. But it is wildly and widely supported by... Um, Jamaicans, Caribbean people, and and the diaspora, of course. Yeah, depending on the upon the left. Big up on yourself. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. listen, we got some. We're gonna have a really good time because I had some conversations that I have been solely waiting to have for a Jamaican guest that I'm gonna have with you today, which I'm very excited about because it's important. The culture needs to hear it. The people need to talk about it. So we're gonna talk about it here today. Julia, Jesus, you ready? Father God, come with me, God. Yes, pray. We yes. gotta pop. We, I wanna pop off the first thing, but guys, real quick, pop YouTube off. membership channel. It is our goal to hit 100 YouTube members in the next 30 days. We already at seven. Delano, pull those up. Pull those seven up because I wanna give a shout out to those seven. Yeah. So we had our first live last week, and since then, we actually got seven members. Delano, where you at with it? Now, this is the thing, guys. The YouTube membership, because we're going to be, we, we invest in and bringing y'all the best content out there. Now, you got to keep in mind, we got to feed ourselves. We got to feed our family. So we need y'all to support. We need y'all to support the channel. And the best thing is about the channel, it allows us to invest in the recruiting and the production, guys. We want to bring y'all the best content. So, Delano, where we at with it? Uh, All right, we listen, listen, new, new, new camera guy in the back. <laughs> yeah. New and camera guy, what is his, going on? His, what is happening right now? Very, very new his shirt guy. says yeah. rich and fit. I mean, I'm not sure what the fit is or the rich. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he's losing it. So, shout out to Clarity Speaks, shout out to Sheila McKee, shout out to Jasmina, shout out to Wally, shout out who we got, who else we got on there. We got Gina. Shout out to Gina. Wally Moore. And shout out Noel. to Noel Byer. Shout out to all these members. And Sin B. Sin B. Big shout out. Big shout out to everybody on here rocking with us here today. We're going to talk about some very things. We're going to start with the culture, y'all. We're going to start here with our culture. Because some things going on in our culture right now that probably needs to be discussed. All right? And probably some things that you are not even in the know of. Which is fine. Because... I'm going to educate you. I'm going to bust it like a, a university presentation. If you don't know it, <laughs> think on the spot. Think on the spot. Yes. See, this is, listen, all I want to get is your perspective on the things going on in this world. So I'm going to give you all a quick backstory. There was this celebrity event that took place. There was a young lady yeah. who was at this event. Her name is Sukiyana. Now, Sukiyana is widely known for her very wild, promiscuous brand that she has built over the last few years. In many ways, I mean, you could almost consider her even like a porn star, but she kind of transitioned into now being a rapper, an artist, and putting herself out there, and she's rebranding herself. Real, real in, Becoming a real influencer, I would say, for sure. Now, there was a young artist. So she's rebrand. so she's no longer that. No, she's... She's, she's just bigger. She's just bigger. Yeah, it's and not... It's it's not. She's still very. Don't follow me under your hand like this. Very no 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 no. <laughs> so she still has. Get a, them right. She still has a very promiscuous brand. Okay. Still big on sex. She's still selling sex. Okay. Okay. But it's more in a rap game versus just the sex game. If that makes sense. Kinda. Okay. Okay. Now she was at this event and this young another young popular artist YK Osiris. He sees so her. Kiana and YK Osiris. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Now, check it out. <laughs> she flirts with him a little bit. Hold on, Lana. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see, let me see. Hold it back, run it back, run it back. <laughs> she flirts. She flirts with him a little bit, and mm -hmm. he takes it as a sign that he can 
just kind of jump in and give her a kiss. Well, well let, let's, yeah, let's let's leave it up to her interpretation because I want to take a look up. at this. Can they can they can they hear the sound? No sound on this one. Just check it out. You don't even you don't even need to hear nothing. Just look. So it looks like she's moving away. She wow. looks like she's moving away, right? Wow. But this young man is persistent. And then look at Lil Duval. He's like, <laughs> he don't he don't even know what's going on right now. He don't even know what's going on right now. He's trying to act like he don't know what's going on. And cut. Now, this was a very big thing because obviously she went to Twitter and online expressed her dissatisfaction with being pushed on like this. But I think a bit before the reason he felt like he can do that was a little bit because of the flirting. And I mean, she truly does overly sexualize herself. She actually I didn't stated see the flirting actually. Where's the flirting? Well she stated specifically. I wish we could show that because there yeah. was no flirting in that in that video. So what she but she stated she stated I will turn I will turn you out. I will turn your little behind out. I will turn your little behind and out. And then when somebody then say, when in. somebody says that what do they mean? Now no, no. I was, are you no. genuinely asking? I am I'm trying to be specific. When somebody says that what do they mean? I don't know if, what, if what I, I, I don't know what said, she I'll mean. turn you out. Right. What do you think they mean? I don't know what she meant specifically, but I think First I all, would assume that she meant she would do some things sexually that were <laughs> were new. Yeah, so it's it's <laughs> like I'm like, sexually ahead of you. Yeah, I will I will yeah. turn you out to some. I, I will have you experience yeah, some things you've never not, experienced. That's not a direct invitation to say, okay, you can't. You have permission to invade my personal space and kiss me. No. Mm. So flirting doesn't give the man the right to try to do something physical. He didn't even, or even if. It is that he wanted to respond to her. He could have just matched her energy. He could have said something flirtatious back instead of break that barrier and actually do something physical. That that's a definite no no. And even if she's promiscuous or she still um, has you know sex as her brand, it still doesn't give a man or anyone at all to break her personal space in any way. That's a basic human right that has not been violated just because her brand is that way. She has to give you permission to touch her or to do to do any sort of thing to her physically. So that's why now, I Now, what, what do you think about the the young lady's part in, or role in the situation? You, do you think that, you know, she... Well, clearly, you don't think she invited that that mm, that contact. I think she invited playful banter. Mm. She said, I'll turn you out. I think an appropriate response would have been, I don't know what you guys say, but, you know, an appro and no, first of all, none of this is really appropriate. <laughs> I mean, see, that's what but, I want to talk about. Which so, because you, you're talking about the the guy's part, because I, I understand that, and that was that was that was pretty much assault. Is, is there what was happened. no if, consent? That right, there was no right. consent. And then remember, I asked you the reason why I asked you, what does that mean? You know, guess what word you started with? Well, I assume. Mm. So the guy assumed that it was an invitation to get physical, and it really wasn't. It was just a flirting. And remember, their playful banter is on different levels. So my playful banter with a guy is like. Ah, uh, let me borrow your socks. <laughs> That's my level. That's oh, wholesome. Sorry. That's wholesome banter. <laughs> right? That's wholesome banter. <laughs> See, the thing or, is, I, I think that was like super inappropriate what he did, but for I also think it's a level of inappropriateness from her as well. But I think an issue that I'm having is how how celebrated it is. You know, when a woman puts puts herself in that type of position, because I I still think although it was very inappropriate, I still think she was positioning herself. You know. Um. You know, all right, so I have the, I have to answer this twofold. What you're saying is tantamount to if a woman wears a pair of shorts and her butt cheeks are showing, then the man has the right to advance upon her without her permission. So that's the same kind of principle you're giving me with that, and that's a definite no-no. So in that vein, even if she said that, it still is not outright consent. Consent is is pivotal to any action that a man will want to take with regards to a woman. So if you don't have open consent, then you have no business invading the, the woman's personal space. On her part, I would agree with you that it is inappropriate because it is something that I wouldn't do. But remember that, as I was saying, there are different levels to flirting and playful banter. Um, for me, um, flirting would look something geekish, like I say, oh, I like your socks or something like that, right? Mm. <laughs> because I'm geeky. Um, but on her level, she's different. She, you know, her brand is a little bit more open. It's a little bit more sexual. And so her playful banter would be on a different level. Do I agree with it as a person? No, I don't. But 
you're, we're forgetting the important thing, which is consent. He didn't get any consent, and so um, she is within her right to go on Twitter and you know, you know, fuss about it and 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 and, and you know, be unhappy and dissatisfied. She's totally within her right to do that. But let me and, ask you this: fellas, Do you think do you think that it's possible for a woman in that situation, or let's talk about that specific situation? Uh, specific situation. Do you think she put herself at more risk for something like that to be happen with her behavior? Yes, because it gives off that kind of a vibe. Um, it's it's almost like we have a term in Jamaica where you say "rub butter across puss mouth," right? It's like when you take the but puss cats we call cats puss. Okay. It's like when you take a stick of butter, <laughs> you take a stick of butter and you rub it across the, the, the cat's mouth, but you don't allow them to have it. Mm. So it's like it's temptation then and, and, and it's aggravation. Right. So yes, some of the times, some of the times, um, based on how a woman will posit herself, it can aggravate the opposite sex. However, it still does not give them permission to act inappropriately or act without consent. As I say, the pivotal thing in this is, did, were you given consent? If a woman walks naked on the road right now, you don't <laughs> right. have con you, right. that is not consent to say that's not consent to say come and touch me. It's not. So so let me ask Tarshan. So Tarshan, what do you think should have been the proper response from Y K, K Osiris if something like that were to happen again? As a she, killer, he over there. She say, oh, "I'm gonna turn you. Out. I'm gonna turn. You. Hey, we gonna see. We gonna see who gonna turn who out. <laughs> like you just kind of play back with her. But see, that's that's the thing too, especially in this over sexualized society that right. we live in. Guys, y'all got to be prepared that it's going to be some ladies that's going to be constantly looking like they're propositioning themselves just by their posture, just by their brand, just by how they present themselves. But that's, listen, it's an illusion. You, you got to be careful, too. I actually don't think it's very safe for men to reciprocate flirting with women these days. I actually think in some cases flirting can be, you know, considered feminine if you if you are going back and forth with a woman versus just expressing, flat out expressing interest. So I do think, like, if he would have said something back to her, I also don't think that's the best thing. It's like, if you're not interested in this woman, you have no intent to do anything with this woman, my thing is just don't respond at all. No, and no, keep no. Moving. I think it's, it's context. It's context. Like, they I celebrities, you, yeah. they they add an event, there's celebrities there, she's over there playing with him, it's a mic there, the that's, camera's see, on See, him. that's what I mean by, by, by it, it, I consider it a bit feminine on his end because she's playing. If you a man, I'm I'm not playing with you about you saying you're going to do something sexual to me. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, I think a mature man would have literally just, I mean, bro, I would, if I was in that situation, I just would have kept moving. Are you but just saying that to sound good? Because men can talk, you know. Are you just saying that to sound good or you actually really mean No, it? no, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about it. Because, and this is the thing, it's, it's a new day and time. So many things can be said. So many things can be recorded. And the thing is, if you put yourself in the position to reciprocate flirting, which I, cause I get it. Women say things sometimes and if we feel in a certain way, <laughs> we're gonna wanna say something back. But if you put yourself in that situation now, I think you do put yourself at risk for, for whatever reason, how she feels at that given moment, who's watching the situation that she could easily decide to interpret that at that point in time as harassment. Yeah. So my thing is if you're not really serious about, you know, dealing with the woman, then why even entertain something like that? Yeah, Just know your own boundaries. I mean, right. you have to have your own standards. And even if you're in the public space, even if you've had a few drinks, even if you you, you need to be socially appropriate, don't ever go outside of the, your own boundaries that you set for yourself. The reality of the situation is, too, we got to understand, ladies and even fellas, as soon as you put yourself in a position to present yourself in that way, you are literally at risk of inviting that energy. Whether we like it or not, whether we say, no, that's wrong, people shouldn't do this. <laughs> that's just the reality of the situation. I even, and, and I even, and let me tell you, I even say this for the men too, because I actually have a homeboy who's like a sex symbol online, always kind of, you know, shirt down, you know, think, you know, doing sexual moves and sexual positions online. And he constantly Why says- Why to like show the sexual moves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was he was flexing them, right? Let me tell you, those that was trust me, that was not the sexual moves. <laughs> but when I tell you, he says the, no, you see, that the was DMs. Painful banter and what you do, you match my energy. You didn't try to come over here and pinch my nose. I know how to do it, <laughs> but see, they, but he didn't, and that's what can happen. And just like that, the, my my boy, his DMs are crazy. Women come at him wild all the time, 
And it will happen on both ends of the spectrum. So y'all just watch how y'all putting yourself out there because whether we say, whether, whatever we deem is right or wrong, that's not how the world is going to respond. The world is going to respond. The and they're going to match your energy. So, yeah, just unfortunately, that brother, he's going to have to learn it, the hard way. I mean, he may end up learning in court, and it actually <gasps> may be some, some so, so civil she, repercussions. She, accepted, she actually accepted his rep- apology. So that's actually how this all, it just came out actually yesterday that he did a public apology. At first, she was going to Twitter saying that she's distressed. She's turning off her of social media, and it seemed like she was building up to take it to court. But she recently came out and said that she's accepting the apology, and she's not going to advance it to the legal system. So he's just going to take this L in public and, you know. Well, he's God lucky. Not, he's lucky. thank God for that. Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, he, he <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. I don't know what that young man could have been thinking. Like, that's just kind of crazy. He would actually grab her face. Like twice. You, you better really twice. know it when you grab her face. Run it, run it back twice. No, nah, no, nah, don't even run that back. That's, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. That was kind of crazy. Well, see, yeah, I'm disappointed, my man, for that one. This, this Dude, actual. The east side. Let me tell you, this conversation is the one that was just for you. This is the one that was just for you. What Y'all, conversation? I heard about this. I thought, I thought this was crazy. So I'm very uh, interested to get your perspective on this for sure. So there <laughs> is some data and some statistics. Be frightened. Y'all know people. Me don't know what they matter. I sorry. <clears throat> I am a frightened. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't a clue of what they speak. I like that personality so for the people coming who out don't right now. know and who can't tell, if you're <laughs> under a damn rock, she's a darn rock. A she darn actually rock. is a Jamaican woman, and this is a conversation I want just for a Jamaican because there's some stats floating around the internet on a few pretty reputable websites that right now in Jamaica... 70% of the men that have went and gotten paternity tests have all came back and showed that they are literally not the fathers of the children that were put onto them. And most of them, based on this article, most of them were actually not the ones who were pushing for it. It was like their, the, it was the women in, in their family, the mothers, the aunts, the cousins, pushing like saying like, yo, you are not the father of this child, and I think we call that Jamaica. That's a that's a jacket, right? <laughs> jacket. A jacket. Did it, did, wait, scroll, wait, 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 wait. Zoom in on that. Zoom in on that. I need the pronunciation. That's a what? A jacket. A jacket. A jacket. A jacket. Is that wrong? <laughs> Pronounce. How, how am I supposed to say it? Jacket. A jacket. A jacket. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a jacket. That's crazy. Well, it's just so y'all know, that's a, a father who's raising a child that's not theirs, and that's happening. That's a freak. That's a phenomenon Unknowingly. right now. Un- when it's unknowingly, it's a jacket. But, you know, I mean, if they know that it's not theirs, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full suit. No. So, so let me ask you. So wh- why is this? Why is this? You, you grew up in, this, in, in the country. What's, what's going on over there right now? Why? I don't think it is much different from anywhere else. You know, I, you know what it is? Because Jamaicans are very expressive and we are on the map a lot. Our culture is just big and broad. And so. These statistics, even though they're correct, they, they, they are given the perspective of being unique to Jamaica. So first of all, when I come come here, come come get me fit on no bad boy my country. You understand? Everybody <laughs> have that problem of women giving babies to fathers that are not theirs. No, mm. what I think, some of the times, it's a it's a two way thing. Some of the times when persons are in a relationship, you know, um, a Jamaican man might have more than one woman. And sometimes, on the flip side, a Jamaican woman may have more than one man. Mm. No, let me tell you, it's a psychology thing because when women, we always try to seek certainty and, and security. And when you have your Jamaican man and you realize that he probably has another woman or he's not as committed to you, you get scared and you try to seek security for yourself. And I per- when I was about 20 years old, that was 20, 22 years ago, someone said to me that women are like monkeys before they let go off one branch, they hold on to another branch. Mm-hmm. So it can be, and this mm. is not, and, I, and I, I don't want to paint That was like, a wise person that, that told you <laughs> that. Oh my gosh. Wise. These damn I don't want adorn. it to be painted like it's just a Jamaican problem, but you know, in, in, in that particular culture, um, whilst we're seeking security, it might end up that, well, we don't have much faith in the love that this man have for us. So let's see what we can do in terms of getting another guy. It's not that we try to be secretive and sly or foxy, but it's just that sense of security that we try to gain. And then you know, what will happen is, you know, uh, we end up in a situation where 
we have one man and then we have the other guy and then things happen and we might sleep with this person and that person at the same time mm. and then we're just not sure who the father is so you know it, it sounds so horrible <laughs> and it sounds toxic but sometimes really and truly it's just a search <laughs> we got a live audience in here, by the way. Just so y'all right, know, right, right, right. I'm like, what's going on? on? You might as well talk. You might as well talk. Say, what, what's going on? Is it? <laughs> but no, fin right. fin finish your but, statement. Um, it's it's really women searching for that love and that security. And if we don't, we're not getting it from this guy. It's almost that the anxiety and the cert and the uncertainty leads you to try and get it somewhere else. Not because you're trying to spite this person, but you're just fearful. And so, as I said you end up getting pregnant and because you know that, well, you may, it could be that person, but then you love this person so much and you don't really want to leave. And then one man might be uh, more financially stable than the other. Mm. And so... That's the one that get the baby. He the daddy. Yes, wow. but, 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 but I don't want you to think that, okay, the woman literally knows whose kid it is. Sometimes the woman literally doesn't know. And they make the decision to say, that it is that person's child. Or maybe they e they're even sure that it is in their heart that it's that person's child. And they say, well, it's his. And they're thinking that, I mean, this, this guy was just a little one-off thing or just a one and two times. So it must be the man or my bona fide man. So that's how that happens. Um, now, Julie, wait, wait, that, that was too specific right there. Did, you never been in this right. situation. Right. No, yourself. no, it sounds <laughs> like she, she knows <laughs> no, no, some no. people have been in that situation. So, so and if I was in this situation, I would have told you. But it's because I'm a mental health advocate, so I understand the psychology of people who are just going through stuff because nobody is perfect. We all have some sort of skeleton. We all have some sort of thing that we're trying to get over. So sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't been in this situation. I don't even have any kids. So I haven't been in this situation personally, but I've spoken to women who um, have been in this situation. Do, do you think that, you know, because I understand if a woman wants to have, you know, a couple of options, but do you think that's the best practice for a woman to have these different options? It absolutely isn't. I think the best, pra and then no, remember, best practice is not always the easiest practice, right? Mm -hmm. I think best practice is to remain single until you find someone who can love you for you and who, um, what, who you are certain of. I mean, you can't be certain of, you can't put your certainty in man, you have to put your trust in God, of course, but I think the best practice is to be single, but... Best practice is not always easiest practice, and we all fall short of it. So, and things happen. What What about paternity tests? Like, cause this may sound crazy, but in my mind, because of the availability of paternity tests, I think that being smart, every dude should request a paternity test, like regardless of the situation. Not even request, just make it mandatory. Like it's mandatory, like, yeah. Because they were even talking about it. in the article, a couple politicians have brought that to the table. To make that an actual, in the same one, to make that an actual um, thing that is just absolutely mandatory for every child. One of the concerns was that if that was something that was mandatory, it would actually be a lot of kids that were raised without fathers. Wow. So wow. it's actually a debate. It's actually a debate about whether or not that's a healthy practice. But I just want to know your, not your, your, your perspective. But I want to address that. You see, sometimes we tend to skew things to scare people. Like... We say that there are more women in, in the world than men, and so there are a lot of women who are going to be single. And I found out that that's not necessarily true. So a lot of the times we 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 purport this um, kind of statistic to get a certain reaction out of people and to get to people to get people to think a certain way. Mm. So I don't agree that if um, paternity tests were supposed to be done for everyone, then then a lot a lot of kids would be raised without fathers. What happened to the kids who are legitimate? children of the fathers you also have that too so i mean with every drag there's always lift so we don't have to be focusing on the negative part mm. um in terms of making paternity tests mandatory i feel like that's a little bit too black and white and i feel like i mean i don't come here to preach but no no that um mm? <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that is kind of leaving out the god aspect of it because if you are with someone and both of you, your focus is on God, then um, certain things you just wouldn't do. And it's, whoa, it's, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Whoa, no. whoa, whoa. Hold, hold on. on now. Let me tell you. Let My me God want me to have the Let right baby. <laughs> he want me to have the right one. These other, these other cats, I don't know what, who they working with. I don't know. Listen. His God said, you are not the father. Ryan, Jesus you are not the father. 
No, listen, what I am saying is, right, and tr- and uh, if I sound holier than thou, feel free to cut me and say, Jews, hell no, all right? What I'm saying is that when you have, the, um, when, when, when both of you are focused on God, there are certain things that you won't do. So even before you go out and say, okay, cheat with another guy or another girl, you say to your partner, okay, I'm not satisfied, um, I'm not happy in the relationship. If you do make the mistake and, and, and go and have a baby for someone else, then the right thing to do, the godly thing to do would be to admit it to your partner. And then if your partner is serious about it, then both of you can forgive each other and move on and repent from what you've done before. I'm using repent. It's not an abusive word. It just means to not do something anymore. Make your mind up to not do it. So to make your mind up to not do it. So there are several checkpoints before we even reach to mandatory, mm. right? So there, there's a checkpoint of, of just not doing it, praying about it, talking to your partner about how you feel. And if the mistake happens, then there is also the option to confess about it. There is also the option to talk about your fears and try to get forgiveness. Remember, guys, the only reason why guys is not in hot water for these paternity things because y'all don't carry babies. Right. But right. remember, yeah. it's the same mistake. It's the same mistake sleeping with someone else. It's just that when, I'm at, when a woman sleeps with someone else, she has to bear the fruit of it. But the man does not have to, ne- to bear the physical fruit of it. So, you know, it's kind of, the scales are kind of tilted where that's concerned. So first and foremost, before we even reach mandatory, there are many other checkpoints where you could actually talk to the partner, um, do what is right, you know, um, go to God, pray about it together. So the mandatory thing for me, um, I don't think it should be mandatory because it takes away um you know a basic it takes away i feel like it takes away the trust element and 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 uh, yeah I, I don't know how i feel about it well see if it's, it's, ma- if it's, it's mandatory it's not necessarily a trust thing because at that point it's like literally you're getting your paperwork so here's your social here's this document oh and by the way you're not the dad it's like <laughs> it's just paperwork it's, it's trust it's, it's this thing trust but verify i can't remember which uh famous president said that but that was one of his, his thing no 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 you have a girlfriend <laughs> no. <laughs> you have a girlfriend. If she pregnant right now, you have to ask her if you're pregnant with this? While she's pregnant? After. You know, I said... Yes, her, no. I said... No, no, no. That's a good question. I truly think, for me, it's completely situational. If I have a deep enough bond with my woman... And I feel like I trust and know this you woman. You know, somebody get up and come out tired because you just said it now. No, I'm going to tell you, no, because you know things happen. Things because happen. Because sometimes you may knock up a, a woman that you had no intention or would know you know does not need a seed inside of her. And at that point. So why your I'm, seed was inside her? Exactly. It happens. Listen, but, you just told me this stuff happens. And you, you just talked about that, how the woman may be emotionally moved or maybe in a situation where financial stability is, is priority. So... We used to say this when I used to work at Enterprise. It's like if somebody takes a car and they're in a situation where they got to pay to rent this car or pay their bills, what are they going to pay? They're going to pay their bills. So if a oh, woman yeah. is in a, in a specific, specific uh, predicament where she has to worry about her financial future or be honest and true to you, sometimes I think that woman may choose their financial, their financial future. So my thing is why not everybody be on the same page? The, the DNA test exists. We can be good with it. No. Why not everybody be on the same page and have God at the center of your relationship? Now, okay. Now, 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 here's the thing. God is... A, because I, guess what? Hold on. And, and that doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect. What it means that there will be room for discussion no matter what the situation is. So, actually, let me interject right mm-hmm. there. If a man has a baby... You mean baby like, ju- really baby like just in your belly like, like as a man? No, no, no. No, no. Oh, he no, has no, a baby no. with another woman. <laughs> with his woman. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Traditional, old school. <laughs> woman had baby. Okay, has a baby with a woman. He comes to her and he says, babe, listen, you know I love you and you know I trust you, but I would like to get a paternity test. Should she be upset with him if he wants to exercise that right? Absolutely. Mm. Let me tell you why. No, wow. no, no, no. No. Let me tell you why. It's an emotion that she has to express. So you want her to say, okay, I sure. Get it. No. I get it. So that's what I'm saying. If he felt convicted enough that he had to ask her for a paternity test, then he should brace himself for the outburst. I'll give her that space to express how disappointed she is. Um, you know, give her that. Because it, it's unfair for you to come to her and say, oh, 
you know, I want a paternity test and not expect her to react. She has emotions, she has feelings, so let her right. expect. So, of course, she has every right to be upset. Not abusive and not threatening, not manipulative or vindictive, but, of course, extremely upset and hurt, especially if she has been faithful to you. So, yeah. Should he, should he do it anyway? You know, I can't tell anybody what to do, but if you are convicted enough to say that you need... First of all, as, as I said, my stance is that shouldn't be the thing. I mean, my parents did not get a paternity check, t test, right? So I'm kind of old school where it's yours. And if it's not yours, then me tell you, and you decide if you're going to keep the baby. Just like when a man gets a woman pregnant outside of marriage, old-time people, my grandparents, them and so on, if, if, if they are husband... You know, the 70s, the 60s, the 40s, went and got another woman pregnant. Guess what the wife do? Take in that baby. When, when Jamaicans say take in, mean they take the child in the house, in the matrimonial house. Wow. And look after them. Y'all hear know, that? I know that right. that doesn't... No, that's take not... Take them a, babies in, ladies. That's not an excuse. <laughs> that is not an excuse. That is not an excuse to, 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 to do that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, if he feels the conviction to ask, then... You can't, you can't, you can't ignore it. Ask, but at my stance is, you should always just trust the person that you're with, um, if they are have proven themselves to be trustworthy. And you know, once of course, I'm not preaching, but I don't know what else to say because that's what's in me. Once God is the center of the, the relationship. Well, let let let's see what the audience has to say because I actually dropped the poll. The poll was, do you think paternity tests should be mandatory? And right now we have 24 votes. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll, and. 58% of people said yes. Wow. 58% wow. of people said yes. Now, we still got about 16% of people that's still thinking about it. I don't know what y'all thinking about it. It's like, how is the, it, I mean. All the comments them stay, they might troll me. The yeah. comments is crazy. I got to actually, nah, listen, I got a couple shout outs. Oh, so, the Lord, the listen, Lord. I got a couple shout outs. Shout out to Fancy Cashwell. Just joined the YouTube member. Fancy, we love you. Shout Thank out. you for joining the YouTube <laughs> membership. We're going to take great care of you. And listen, yeah. this is the thing, guys. I actually didn't say this. For anybody who joins the YouTube membership, Tyshawn and I, we want to get to know you. We want to learn what you want to hear. We want to give our audience some more. Uh, 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 access, some, some more access some, some to one us. On one time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a link for a 15 minute call with both Tashana and I, so we can learn a little bit just more about just for the first 50 people. That's just it. for the first 50 people. Just for the first. Just for the first 50, 50, 50 we get people. To know you, baby. So shout out to Fancy and shout out to Dre. Shout out to Andre Hatchet. He's probably the notary king, one of the best notaries I know. It, he says uh, he actually dropped a super chat. He says if a guy's is too safe and boring. <laughs> They'll cheat. <laughs> <laughs> what you think about that? That's, what that's you, what you think about that? That's if a guy, do you, do you think if a guy is too boring, a, a one really, really wouldn't be interested for a long time? I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, let me ask you this. I mean, you dated guys before, right? Gee, wow, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was teasing. She's wow. wholesome. Oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm super wholesome. Right. Super wholesome. <laughs> so when you say when you tell your, your ladies, you say, hey, he was too boring. I, I didn't really like him. Don't want to go out with him again. What does too boring actually mean? You mean on a date, not in on a, a relationship, just yeah. on a date. Just a date. He's too boring. Um, it could, be, it could mean several different things for different women, but I feel like, you know, fundamentally, um, he didn't converse enough. Um, he wasn't showing enough interest. You see, for all, a, lot of, a lot of the times men think that they have to be superfluous or they have to... Uh, flash everything that they have or talk about their careers or talk about their nice cars. Sometimes we just want to know that you are like super interested in us and you find something on us that looks great. Like, oh, I like your earrings. Like if you notice that I'm wearing a pair of earrings or something like that. No, that's, you see, to broad brush, the, the answer to that question is a little bit difficult because remember, every woman has probably a, diff a different set of love languages. But you are safe if you basically, you know, compliment the woman and talk, uh, talk to her about what she likes and, you know, ask her questions, basically get to know her um, so, and make her laugh. Women like to laugh. So going on a date and, 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 and a woman says, oh, he's too boring. Maybe it could be that, you know, he was lacking the, the, the engagement, the laughter, the fun, the frolic. We like to have fun. We like to frolic. But just don't, we just don't like when people take us. Um, take advantage of us because it just like you know the fun and the frolic with with what you just that was me. too much fun and it frolic. was a little bit too much but a lot of the times and and, and and as women sometimes the reason we are uptight is because we are so accustomed to men thinking that okay we're easy just because we laugh a lot or we are pleasant towards you 
So it could be several different things. It could be that she didn't feel at ease with him. Um, he didn't compliment her. He didn't engage her. He didn't talk to her. So you that's know. the that's the dating boring. And what's the relationship boring? Because I actually had somebody in the comments. She said, and I agree with this, dating and marriage boring will probably be two different things, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. what's what's the relationship boring? You said dating and marriage and relationship. No, 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 no. Just just you, you gave us dating. What's the I'm in a committed relationship, but my guys, he's boring. I'm I'm done with him. I mean, that shouldn't even be. So you you decided to get in a committed relationship. What was your why? And that's the why that's going to last throughout the relationship. If he suddenly becomes boring, then you see, it's when you're in a relationship, it's no longer a he did this or she did this. It's a what are we doing to fix the situation? So if he's somehow all of a sudden boring, then maybe you are doing something that he's not responding to. Or I, I don't know. It, it could be anything. So to resolve that is to just have a discussion with your partner. If it is that it can't be resolved or for, for whatever reason you are growing apart um, or you're just not interested in each other, then, then it would be time to separate. But I would think it would be a fair assessment to say the man is boring because you did get with him. And likewise for the men, top, well, I can't talk about the woman boring because you did decide to get with her. You both decided to get with each other. So, you know, when you do break up, you know, it... it, it it's just, it, it's not so simple. It's complicated. Mm. That's what I think. But I have a question for you. Oh, wow. We about to get interviewed. Wait, wait, you got, you got some questions for us? Yeah, yeah one. We have a question. Oh, okay, okay. And, and Lano, you got to get active. Yeah, get active on, the, in, on see, that let, camera. Let me get see. those reactions too, Lano. Let me see. Get what active on that switcher. Would you be okay? Would you well, be she offended? Wrote, she wrote this down, by the way. Would you be offended if your wife asked you to do an STD test? No, no. If no. my wife asked me to no. do an STD, STD test, I think that's just about equivalent to being asked the paternity. I think that's that's literally the equivalency. Is it? It's the equivalency. I don't think so. It's all. It's all. I don't trust you. You may have had sex with somebody else. That's well, the I mean, your wife. See, the thing is, your wife. Though, mash up or no mash up. Yeah, I mean, your wife. Yeah, and your wife is even. And the wife is even more. I mean, because you are. Yes. I'm assuming you already having unprotected sex before you mm -hmm. get married, probably. Yeah, so you've been married. I mean, you know that you, you you've both already are. been married. Yeah. And she's asking. That's also an accusation. That's kind of random. That's kind of random, though, right? Yeah, I think that is a cheating accusation. Maybe it's I will. Maybe I will feel a little different. Of course. So then, how you think she feel when you come out of the blue oh, no, no, asking no, 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 her no, 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 when no, no. she has that no. child? Don't you think? Oh, that's because, 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 because you text that in the room. We had right, a text message right. sent. The I get it. <laughs> I get what's going on here. No, let me say this because the thing is, the child brings on a different level of investment. So, it's, so a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a new commitment. The child is a new commitment. But 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 STD <laughs> brings on a new level of commitment. You have to take <laughs> penicillin. Penicillin wants every such delights, and you have to go and get tested to see your your reactor because when you do HIV test, well, it says uh, non-reactive. So you have to do your <laughs> see how much reactive are you until it goes. That's a commitment. I'll take Sometimes that. I'll accept that. Sometimes it takes eighteen years to show up non-reactive. I'll accept that. As the only HIV difference, person. listen, listen, Julie. The only difference is that with one commitment, you can deal with by yourself. With the first commitment with a kid, I I have to I have to deal with you. I gotta stay I gotta stay connected with you. I get if what I got the clap or the herpes or something like that, I can deal with that and just me. No, without you. Emotionally, you cannot. That would break you emotionally. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. Yeah. That yeah. you have to, you have to, you have to communicate with the other person. Then, if you have a child, etc. I get you. But with with the STDs and and it doesn't make it any less arduous because you have to deal with that by yourself. That's probably even worse. No, I wouldn't even no, say no, it's no, worse. I, I, I would say, say it. it's the same level of difficulty, distress, and disillusion. Think, of, think Look, about, we got we got. They asking for the people. They said, bring the people from behind the background. Bring them on camera yeah. too. They asking for them you know, to come on camera. You know, see the thing about it is, at the end of the day, you know, when you think about having a child, bringing a child into this world, that's like you imagine that this is your legacy. You think this is your bloodline. Like you literally, imagine a man. Well, you don't know. I don't know if you know what it feels when a man has a son. When he has a son, he puts his last name on on that son. He imagines that this is the way his DNA is going to keep moving on in this world. Like, there's something very special about children that nothing else can compare to. Now, just the act of asking about taking a test, I see how those are close. But when it comes down to it, the dope. emotional tie to raising a whole life, a soul, into this world, there's nothing like it.
I think that's one of the. <laughs> I that's, had to that's get one of the biggest Here's betrayals. Soul. Here's soul. It, I mean, it's, it's what it is. Here's what it is. Here's what it is. Right. You're perfectly right in what you're saying. Um, your 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 opinion is absolutely valid. Um, so I'm an emotional person, and when when I'm hurt, I cry and I can't go to work. My best friend Nadine, she's not an emotional person. And when she's hurt, she doesn't cry and she works even harder. Is it that she's been less affected than me or we just have differ, differing coping mechanisms? Mm. Is a rhetorical question. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was rhetorical. I thought it was rhetorical. I thought it was rhetorical. Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is it. What's the answer? The answer right. is no. <laughs> It doesn't mean that she, it affects her less or me more. We just have differing coping mechanisms, right? And so I can't say to her that because she's not behaving the way I do, she's not hurt. And she can't say to me that because I'm behaving the way I do, I'm not hurt. Likewise, you can't say that because you have sonship that you need to protect. It is your seed. It is your last name. It is your yes. bloodline. Yes. You can say that because the woman does not have that experience, it doesn't mean that her asking you for an STD test is not as valid as you asking her for a paternity test. Both of them carry the same weight. It's just that it is felt in a different way, but they both, care. They both are on the premise of one question. Are you sleeping with someone else? I get it. I mean, I I, I, I get it. That is the, the, the fundamental no. presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she bad. Talk truth. She bad. Eh? So, 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 like so she got a she brought a whole gang in here that's <laughs> that's texting her questions to ask. Literally, literally. To to debate with us. So it's really it's not really two on one. It's, it's two one, on three. Three. Right, no. right, right. In here right She's now. So just so y'all know. Don't forget, right don't right. forget um, Rich and Fit. No, he lost. He lost. He lost. He's he, yeah, he, yeah. not battling right, right now. Right, right. Trying to figure it out. <laughs> but let me let me tell you, I'm I'm the reason I'm I'm really excited and I've oh I've been so excited to have you on the platform is because we had some fun talking about some topics and talking about some things that's very important. Mm -hmm. And I want I, we we're gonna see how those develop. But you, Julie, have a fascinating story, and you've been through a lot. Mm -mm. You've been through a lot. I tell you. Because I'm going to be honest. Mm. When Julie got I on the phone with me by the river. And, told me that, <laughs> and told me her story, I knew we had to get you on the show because you're dealing with something that I know is some people right now watching this show that they've dealt with, dealing with, or know somebody dealing with. And I want to start there with you because I want to unpack this. Um, let's start. You know what? Where is the best place to start? I think it's childhood. You know, I don't know. I tell the truth. I hope you wouldn't think about it since you was the interviewer. Come in know. <laughs> no, we got you. We got the you. The are way too hard for my people. Speak English, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't, I know y'all don't understand that. I'm saying I was hoping he would know where to start because I have no idea. Well, how about this? I know exactly <laughs> where to start. Because the, the people came because this is the thing. I, I heard a little bit of your story secondhand from Tyshawn. And, um, you know, we get the people send us kind of issues that happen in their personal life. And abandonment issues is one of the, the really important things that people are working on. It's one of the things that are, you know, the catalyst to a healthy or unhealthy relationship, you know. So if you can kind of kind of start how you grew up, that would give us a better idea of kind of where to move from, from from there. So how did how did the early childhood look for you? I mean, all right, so first I'm going to start with my official mental health diagnosis so that it can put things in perspective instead of just wild storytelling. <laughs> so my official um, mental health illness diagnosis is borderline personality disorder, um, which is different from bipolar disorder. And the, why, I, why I importantly state that is a lot of persons are misdiagnosed as bipolar. And if you treat borderline personality disorder the way you treat bipolar disorder, you can literally run someone straight into suicide. I hope that's not a tag word that has to be. Um, but yeah. No, we can so talk I have about to that. start from there. So that's that's my official diagnosis. I was diagnosed officially when I was borderline personality, borderline personality disorder. disorder. And yeah. what what exactly is that and when were you diagnosed with that? So I was diagnosed officially um at the age of twenty one, but I've had it since I was eight. Right? Wow. And what it is, it's a personality 
personality disorder. I don't know why it's it's not necessarily called a mental illness. I think maybe schizophrenia is a mental. The doctor is in the hole. She can. She's actually a, a anesthesiologist. My friends are so oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, and that one sleep. has a master's yeah. in something. I'm not sure. Why. Yeah. They're all high people. She just got very beautiful. Tashan's <laughs> 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 a gold digger. He's a gold digger. <laughs> I am a gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. So um, it's the, the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, severe abandonment issues. Um, sometimes you can exhibit bipolar disorder symptoms like one minute you're on a high the next minute you're on a low um you experience depression suicidal ideation hallucinations um you misjudge people a lot so sometimes you are their closest friends and you love them to death and then suddenly you wake up and they are the devil to you and you treat them crass you cut them off and you walk away from them wow um and you so that's basically the bulk of it if you go on the um i think it's the nwia or nmia national mental health something something you'll see the nine main symptoms of borderline personality disorder i've exhibited all of them except for um the hallucinations as far as hallucinations wow yes so okay so now how does that relate to the bipolar disorder like why would you be mis misdiagnosed and how could a misdiagnosis kind of make the situation because, a lot worse so borderline uh, bipolar disorder so for example first of all the direct treatment for borderline personality disorder is cognitive behavioral therapy mm. cbt and then the one that is that goes deeper for borderline personality disorder is dialectical behavioral therapy that's those two are the only things that work. Um, with bipolar disorder, they have a different mixture of medicine and talk therapy and psychotherapy that is not necessarily dialectic behavioral therapy. And that is specific to borderline personality disorder. And that's why you need that treatment. For a person with bipolar, they don't necessarily need um, DBT. Got you. So that's, that's why it, it can, you know, we need to specific i think it's specific yeah uh -huh. no that makes sense that it's makes like sense. if you have a car that use diesel you put gas mm -hmm. so i don't i don't know oh, what don't, she is oh, <laughs> so the, the pat's are getting hard yeah it's getting it's getting it's, hard yeah it's getting I, I caught it i caught it yo we just so it's official i, I want to say this real quick because we just hit over a hundred people on the live stream which is dope it, it's probably I, i'm assuming it's a lot of people that's uh celebrating juneteenth did you celebrate juneteenth today yeah yeah here yeah. with us yeah, right. It's a right. celebration. Black business. I want to go here too because um, you, at eight years old, you had this at eight years old. I remember you told me that you experienced something um, when you were young that I think a lot of people have experienced where you had um, a mom, a dad, but they didn't have a great relationship. Yeah. And your mom, actually, while you were being raised, there was some misinformation going on. And because of their relationship, that affected you. I want you to yeah. give me some detail on that. Give me some detail on. So first what, of all, disclaimer: I forgive my parents. I love my mom to death, and I love my dad. So the information that I'm about to share is not for anyone to start hating on my mom or hating on moms in general. It's just a sharing of knowledge so that we can break generational curses. Yes. Right. So all of this is in love. I'm not upset. I'm not angry at mom. I love my mom. I love my dad. I need to put that out there. Yes. All right. Um, so when I was a, a little girl, um, so I did my first self-mutilation at eight, eight years old. I took a bottle stopper and I scratched my thumb um, right here, and then I saw blood coming out. And for me, it felt very satisfactory. And so I think maybe that seed was planted there because a few years went by and I didn't do it again. But, you know, um, in my home, my parents fought a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot. What really, what really drove it home for daddy to ask for a divorce is when um, one night I heard them quarreling and there was a big pan. This was in the 80s, so wait, 80s. This was in like nine, 80s, yes. There was a, a, a pan that we usually, we didn't have water heater. There was a pan that mommy usually boiled the water if I want warm water because I was a kid then I want to do water. Oh, it's cold. So she would boil the water in that pan and then pour it in the basin and she'd make a warm bath for me. Now she got that pan she was arguing with daddy and she said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to dodge you, whatever. And then she put on the pot, she put the water in there. And then she took gasoline and put in the water. And then, I don't know how it never explode, right? She took up the pan 
And then she went in the room where daddy was sleeping and she threw it on him. Um, so that's the boiling hot gasoline mixed with water. Wow. And then dad, so that is kind of, I, 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 I can't wow. figure out why he reacted like this, even though, you know, he is tough and alpha and will get violent if he needs to, um, you know. But when he felt the water, the hot water touch his skin and touch him, he just, he was sleeping and he just opened his eyes and looked at mommy. He didn't even move. And I'm a little girl, I'm like, idiot. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, get up. Right. You don't see what I go. Don't, don't you see what's happening? <laughs> Translation. <laughs> That's crazy. So I'm just there looking with my little pigtails, um, looking at both of them, because mommy's right here and daddy's on the bed. So I'm like, and then she put down the pan and I said, she pulled out a match. So me, I calculate. I am calculating it now. <laughs> she, was, she was about to burn him alive. I pulled out the match and I'm like, well, I know that that's not good. <laughs> I see she light it and I'm like, ah! And I put my hand over it and out the, the, the matchstick. And to this day, if you ask daddy who saved his life, he will tell you, Julie. That's insanely traumatic. So, At eight years old? Wow. I was about eight or nine, yes, because this was this was like maybe a year and a half before the divorce finally went through, and they 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 they, they went their separate ways. So yeah, so that is just one. So yeah, he had like third degree burns. His nah. Okay. He was fine. I mean, but he was like I remember. So all I remember after that is that the next day, pastor and every church sister was <laughs> was over the house, and everybody was praying and. <laughs> and the pastor came over to pray for them and da 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 da. But you know, um, shortly after that, like a few months after that, you know, I realized that they they wanted to, they, they decided to go their separate ways. So that was the kind of that was just one of the, mo the, the the most traumatic ones for me. There are many many more, but that one is really the one that stood out because I feel like I literally saved um that is life. I mean, I'm sure he would have gotten up and something 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 yeah. something. But yeah, and then this kind of so so that's the marriage, and then when they got divorced, no, um, what 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 I wanted to was the plug that you want me to get to is that I was living with mom and dad. Of course, men uno always men always move on, so he was moving on with his life and you know trying to get out their date again and stuff. But mommy was still hurt and mm. and and angry and stuff like that, and so he moved on to another person and mommy was still there so she was telling me that he doesn't love me or daddy doesn't love me and when i wanted to go shopping now in, in how jamaica is set up in those times and them can back me up in the 90s so kingston is like foreign meaning america and then country where i am in clarendon the rural areas that's like jamaica oh look, kingston is jamaica selena but when you live in country and you're going kingston is almost like you're going to america Mm. So daddy would offer to take me to Kingston to go shopping. So to, to put that in perspective, that's one of the most exciting things that your dad can say to you, to take Makes you sense. to Kingston to shopping, halfway tree mall to shop. And so I wasn't allowed to go because she's saying that she, he hates me and he's trying to use me to do something. So basically she poisoned my mind against him. When he bought, he bought me a, a watch for my birthday, and I remember she, she infiltrated my thoughts so much that I took the watch and threw it at his face when he came to look for me um, at the restaurant that she owned for, for my birthday. And I wow. could see the tears coming out his eyes. And he didn't discipline me or anything. Them time there probably was like 11, 12. He didn't discipline me. He's like, okay, Julie. And then he retreat. He took up the watch, went back in his vehicle and drove home. So all throughout my teenage years. You I, saw him cry? Yeah. Was no, well, let me tell you something. My dad is an alpha male, but you see, if. If he wants to cry, if he wants to cry, even if the queen is standing up beside him, he will cry. Mm -hmm. So he's not afraid to cry. Okay, so that was the first time you saw him. Um, I see him. As, uh, like that for yeah. something I did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the I brainwashing him, was so deep. Yeah, man. I see him cry for when a church brother died. You know, daddy will listen. Daddy will cry. <laughs> He's yeah. not going to let an opportunity to shed some tears pass by him. 
Um, but he's still an alpha male. I don't know how he managed that balance, but yeah. yeah. And so um, he didn't discipline me or anything. He just went in his vehicle and went home. And as I, as I said to you, all of my teenage years, I thought that the first man who was supposed to love me didn't. I thought he abandoned me based on the narrative given to my mom because she was upset with him. And so that led to me seeking my identity in men and, you know, see, see, going through a different relationships that were a failure, um, I wouldn't say promiscuity because promiscuity is really when you're not looking for love, you're just out there. But I was looking for love. So one failed relationship, I felt bad. It took out a piece of me. Then I moved to the next relationship. It took out another piece of me. And next one, and next one, and next one, and next one. Um, until I was just a total wreck, like an empty shell. And, you know, I had to seek healing on my own. But that was basically because I thought that the man who was supposed to love me first didn't. Which was not true. He was trying to, but it was a narrative that my mom told me. So what I was saying to you earlier, I'm going to soon wrap it up because I'm going to talk. I mean, I soon wrap it up because <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying to you earlier is that um, when, when, when parents separate, I'm going to spit down on my mic. Come on. No, you're good. You're good. You're, you're good. good. <laughs> 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 when parents separate, um, it is imperative that you don't talk to the child, you don't talk bad things to the child about the other parent or you don't use them as a tool or a weapon to get at the other parent because the only person that suffers or the person that suffers the most is the child because that mash up my meds, you know, to think what that my dad didn't love me. And, and I, did, I love my dad. He's the most handsomest. Um, I admire him so much, plus him have bow leg. Well, him sick, you know, so I'm not really off the bow leg like that. Him kind of cranky, no, because he's old. But I admired my dad so much. And to, know, to think that he didn't love me, it really messed with my head. Wow. So because of that relationship with your father, it led to these back-to-back -back failed relationships with you looking for this love mm -hmm. that you didn't have. That I did have, but I thought I didn't. That you did have, but you thought you didn't. Going back to that place, if you could go back in time after you experienced that, what, what needed to happen for you to fix yourself? Because you can't go in, whenever you go into the dating marketplace broken, you're going to get handled. Mm -hmm. You're going to get handled. You're going to get mashed up. What did you need to do before you, if you can go back and do it, what did you need to do to heal yourself for the people in that situation? What was the exercise you needed before you went out there and put yourself in front of those men? Therapy. That's it. People, all right, and all right, so. It's nothing you could do without a therapy? Because what if you can't no, no. afford therapy? Like for my people who are in a situation where they can't afford therapy, they don't have access to it, because that's, that's, that's a, a really common answer. What do they need to do to help themselves in that way? Well, they're going to have to try some self-help and um, help w with the, boy, the <laughs> All right, the reason why I say therapy, right, is because the tools and the techniques are available through um, that sort of, 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 of medium. So, you know, to be able to go in your past and to, 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 to unpack some of these emotions and to unpack some of these events, it's really a professional that has to do it. But, okay, fine. If persons don't have access to therapy, then you have to be able to talk to your friends. I would say go into the church or talk to someone in the church, but even though the, I am a Christian... Um, sometimes it is difficult for persons within the church to understand the intricacies of a mental illness or, or a personality disorder. And, and, and I know that there are some people who say, oh, this is a Western problem and that they don't have this sort of thing. You, you know, you should go out into nature more or you should go out and, and do things natural more. That is absolutely true. But at the same time, the solution has to fit the problem. So... If, we, if you live in the middle of New York, wh on which day are you going to have access to 28 uh, acres of prairie to go and relax and to sit down? You Sometimes the things that are recommended for you to relax and to take a breather, they're not available based on your everyday life. You get up in the mornings, uh, you drink your coffee or you make your breakfast or whatever. You go to the gym probably, then you go to work. and da, 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 da. So that's your lifestyle. And so... Um, the solution has to fit the type of lifestyle that you're living. And so for that lifestyle, therapy is, is what is suited for that. If you're living somewhere else um, and you, you live on a farm, and even so, you still need therapy. But, but if you have access to things of nature, because you know that we were not designed to be sick, right? 
We were designed to live until we die. And, and, and our minds were not designed to be sick. Our minds were designed to heal itself until we die. And so being sick is an indication that something is wrong. Mm. But then, as I say, we have to be practical. If you don't have access to go out and go by the river every day, you have to go to a job to pay your rent to look after your kids, then the, the, the solution has to fit the type of culture that, that you live in. So my thing is, is, is therapy, yes. And for those who can't afford it, you're going to have to get some good friends who are well-read and some friends who can help you. And when I say help you, it means help you mentally. And it's not a one-day or a two-day thing. It can be a, a six-month thing. It can be 10 years. My friends um, who, even though I had therapy, my friends have been trying to help me out of this thing from high school. Mm. And that's, 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 that's almost 30 years ago. So and, I and I just got healing. You would think I've been healed for a while. No, I was just healed three years ago. And even mm. now, I, there are still th some things that I'm trying to unpack. So if you don't have access to therapy, your friends have to be there for you or people in your community. But there is no getting around talking to somebody and getting and, 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 and trying to process the things that you have been through. But what, what, what are some of the indicators that you would say that, you know, let, let, should let you know that you probably need some help? If you're thinking suicidal thoughts or if you're thinking that you, you can't take this life anymore. Does it have to get to that point or like, you know, because you, you were saying that you was, you know, basically looking for love in the form of men. So it could it be some indicators there? or some If you're maybe doing the same thing over and over and you're getting the repeated bad results, it could be that you're doing something wrong or there's something infinitely wrong. Um, and and it, it just, first of all, looking for your identity in men or in anything is incorrect. So from that standpoint, but sometimes when you're sick, you don't know that you're sick. Mm -hmm. So it's your friends that will have to look on you and tell you that something is wrong. So really and truly, you can tell if you're doing, if you're in a relationship or if multiple relationships and they keep failing, that's an indicator. But if you have a friend who is doing some things that's not right, you can also tell them, okay, you know, um, I don't think what you're doing is right. I don't, th I think you might need help. I think you might need professional help. You know, I want to, I want to actually go into the portion you just actually spoke about because you you brought up if you have any suicidal thoughts. And it got, I could tell it really got crazy because when you spoke to me, you said that you even started to experience thoughts of suicide and even started to act on some of them at some, some point. And I want you to walk me through that because now we're at this point now where you're having these failed relations back to back. I'm assuming you're in your teenager, early 20s. Early 20s because I only broke my virginity when I was 19. <laughs> Okay, okay, so that happened. You guys are supposed to applaud. You, is that, look, virginity at 19, that's an applause? Oh, okay. I mean, I've lost mine at 17. Let's clap for me too then, if that's the case. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, 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 hold on, wait. I should start clapping. What, was, what were we clapping for? <laughs> <laughs> we're not Since she lost her virginity at 19 years old. Oh, this day and age, I mean, that might be pretty good. No, I ain't gonna lie. 19 Thanks. is impressive in 2023 for yeah. sure, for sure. But I, I, wanna, I wanna ask you, when it comes to back when, then, I don't know. When it comes to you <laughs> having those suicidal thoughts, when did the suicidal thoughts start to kick in, and why? They kicked in every time someone um, broke up with me, and they kicked in every time I saw another woman with a supportive father. Mm. Um, they would kick in every time I failed at something. So, for example, if I took a math test and I failed, or um, if I was doing a sport and I failed at it or I lost at it. It's anything that has to do with not winning or not being correct or not being revered or praised. So I yearned for acceptance and praise. And if I didn't get it, then I felt like an empty shell. Like I wasn't satisfied with, I didn't have the, I didn't have an inner satisfaction of just being me, of just the fact that I was born. I didn't understand what it is like to just simply love yourself because right? And so it would kick in whenever I fail relationship or I fail that something or, you know, yeah, just, just failure in general. And then, so sometimes, so self-cutting, because I have the scars on my hands now. Self-cutting, right? Wow. Can is, I see? Yeah. Wow. So there's a lot more here, but this side of the skin heals better than this fleshy part. Yeah. And of course, way better than this. So they're all wow. up here. Wow, I see them. Right. I was trying to look to see if the if the people can see that, but yeah, because I I noticed that, but I didn't know what that was. You didn't know what it was. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, no, you I, sure I, you didn't did, know? Even even this one up here. Yes, this one was done in 2012. 
Wow. Oh, these were done. In, this was done in Kosovo. One guy. Do people see so that? This, so this represents each man? No, no, no. One guy was all of this. One guy was all of these. Yes. That, this, that was oh, just yeah. a, the, like one of the more toxic this situations. Ga, that, so the one guy was, um, for the same guy for these, was the one um, with the car accident. The so, car, not accident, the car suicide attempt. No, okay, no, no, I, no, I, no, I got it. No, you didn't like tell, a, you didn't tell yeah. us about those. So, I tell you, I attempt it three times, Tasha. I want you, so I want you to keep walking us through that that whole journey because. Oh, your face gets so serious. Well, but, I, because I gotta, this is suicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Damn, yeah. I can't laugh at well, this. Well, because I just dropped a poll. I just dropped a poll. Listen to this, guys. And listen, this is a very sensitive uh, issue. So I understand if you guys don't want to actually address this poll, but we got about 100 people in the room. Let's try to get about 25%, 30% of people answering this poll. Let's try to get 30 people to answer this poll before I close it down. But right now, we have 16 votes, and 38% of people have either consider, seriously considered suicide or know someone close to them who has. So forty one percent now. So I think that's quite a quite a lot of people. So it's I think anonymous, is, guys. We don't know. You can go ahead and vote. We don't. Yes, yeah, it's, it's anonymous, so you can go ahead and vote. But I, I think that just shows, you know, that it's a very serious uh, subject. I'm I'm curious. Do people see that? Like, do people see us? And do they do they say stuff to you or? So all right, especially so sometimes I give blood. <laughs> Oh, okay. And my best wow. vein is on this hand. Yeah. So when the nurse, I can tell, she, so it's a nurse, so they're professionals. I'm not going to ask because I'm not there for that. But I can tell, like, when they pull out my hand, to, they're like, <laughs> wow. And I literally want to say, it's okay, you know. <laughs> but I just leave it alone. So, like, so sometimes when that happens, or if I go to do a blood test, yeah. anytime when I have to use this hand, and they see there is like I can see it on their face that they're wondering because you have to put your hand like this, right? Right. Um. Whenever I wear no sleeve and I'm talking and I'm gesticulating, um. Per I sometimes I, I'm not conscious of it, so maybe sometimes people are looking and I'm not sure or I don't realize it. Um. In America, people don't ask, but in Jamaica, definitely. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. They like what's okay. Like, cause, okay. What happened to your hand? Let's mess up your hands so bad. Wow. Now, okay, yes. so you mentioned that a majority of them on his left arm is from a singular relationship, yeah, single relationship. Right. And actually, the guy and I know are friends. Can you imagine that? He's Y'all are friends now? Absolutely. Okay, so let me, well, okay, so you, I'm not sure if you're going to say something bad about him or not because I'm no, curious. No, 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 I'm curious, this one relationship, who was the toxic party? Was it both of y'all or was it was you? I feel like it was both. I think it was both of us. Um, he, On his part, um, he wasn't totally honest with me in the fact that he was still with his ex-girlfriend. And then, no, he just decided to go back to his ex-girlfriend because his mother told him to. One sort of rigmarole. And I guess I was toxic because I was crying a lot and, and demanding a lot and being mentally and emotionally unstable. And I'm not just being hard on myself, guys. It's actually true. Um, we can be toxic if we are um, severely mentally unstable. I'm not talking about being clingy. I, 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 I like the fact that I am emotionally clingy, and that's not something. That's something that I am comfortable with as a person, and I don't intend to change it. And whichever man comes in my life will un have to understand that I'm clingy because there's lots of good marriages out there with clingy women, and it actually works better that way, in my opinion. But so I was being toxic by crying, being emotionally unstable, being unreasonable, being um, a Debbie Downer, and just being overall toxically negative. Like if if somebody told me some good news, I'd be like, oh well, you're probably gonna crash and burn or something like that. You know wow. that that kind of thing, right? So that was the type of personality that I had, and um. But he wasn't totally honest with me in the fact that, you know, he probably didn't really have much intention of our relationship. I was just cute. We were both, you know, in the same organization and then yada, yada. whatever the case may be, um, you know, so. But see, that, that, from a man's perspective, any man, you know, that's dating a woman that's in that space, he recognizes that this is not a woman he could be with long term. And in that, so typically when... They're dating that woman. One, he's either equally or just as messed up himself. Mm -hmm. Or two, he's literally in there just having a good time playing with all intentions to get out and just get some level of sexual favor or manipulate the situation for whatever benefit that you he know may what, be able to You know to what want. is weird? Um, a lot of, so a lot of the times they would say, guys would say, you, that scare me. That is scary. Stop that. that but... They don't really, when you when you say so. Wait, what's I, scary? What do you mean is the when cutting, they say the cutting because I would cut in, in the front of them. Sometimes. Wow. 
depending on how I feel. Yeah, or they would see me with a scar, and I would say that's the reason. And so wow. um, they would tell me that that is scary. And when they say stop that, but when you say stuff like stop that or that's scary or I don't like that, those are triggers to just make the person do it again. It doesn't help. So if you have if you have a person who is going through a mental illness and you tell them stop it, it's not good. That's just yeah, gonna yeah, let yeah, them do it wrong. more. Take take it with you. Wow, that's that's first of all, I can't imagine what I would do or how I would respond if a woman cuts herself right in front of me. I yeah, don't even know. That's I don't even wow. know if that's something that I can I can handle or manage. But I have I have experienced women that were just the Debbie Downers, were negative, were, you know, the, the, the women that just kind of came with this, the toxic package where kind of that came with all those things. And again, I know, like, as men, we categorize hey, we're women. Not, you're not going to chat bad about the woman, you know? No, 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 no. But you know, like, you know, like, you might think in your mind, like, man, she crazy as hell. You might think that, and you, ca- you put her, you put this glass ceiling over her, so if you deal with her, you're only going to deal with her a certain way or just cut her off and not deal with her at all. So well, I, I want to say something with that. I understand this whole cutting off and not dealing, dealing with her and, and, and any at all. But at the same time, if you recognize that there is something wrong with a woman, don't continue to have sex with her and try to manipulate the situation. I mm. mean, that's just like Agreed. kicking a man while he's down. Yeah. You know, um, have a conversation. And it's going to be hard because the woman is probably saying there's nothing wrong with her. Having a conversation with her and then um, exclude yourself from being a sexual partner to actually being a good human being and being her friend. Um, help her to get the, 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 the therapy that she needs. Help her to get the help that she needs. But I have something important that I need to say. Yes, it was coming from the text message, but okay. this, right. Phone a friend. And, and, Phone and, a friend. And it is <laughs> Phone a friend. Uh, and it is something that I always preach, right? If Tell me, so if, if you are in, you know, persons who can't afford therapy, you are saying, what if they don't have access to it? Yes. If, if you are talking to someone and they had cancer, they're poor, they can't afford nothing, they, 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 and they had cancer, what would you say to them? I would say go to the doctor. I mean, we, <laughs> I mean well, they're poor. I mean, <laughs> let's... Sorry. We, <laughs> probably get a book or eat healthy. No, hell no. Nah. Go. I mean, it's health care. No, it's like... like Oh, right, government help. You. Government help, right. Yeah, they're going right. to take you. But then them. why you don't apply that exigence to, to, to mental illness? Well, because, you know, the, the only reason we don't no, think no, of no, it no, no. is only because the diseases like that literally eat at you, and it's like a deadline to your death, whereas we don't see mental health and as something that literally can eat at you and give you this deadline. Exactly. We don't think of it the same way. And it actually does give you a deadline. Because when your mind is not right, your body can get sick. And also, you can end up shooting yourself. You can end up... Ki- there's, so, there's so many examples of people who were seemingly well off. Or, I mean, look at... Was it Miss America? Um, she killed herself. Um, look at Robin Williams. He shot himself. Look at the DJ there that, that, that we used to work L- for Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there, there are so many examples. I can't think of any. I mean... I had a friend, you remember Jason Neal? Mm-hmm. I had a friend, we both, um, we, all of us know Jason Neal, handsome businessman. Yeah. Can get any girl. I mean, they like him too. <laughs> 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 and in 2018, I go, yeah. And in 2018, I go on Facebook and I hear say Jason shoot himself. So check, so check this well, out, I'm, Julie. Oh, you got something? Yes, so um, before we close out or anything, we need to share the resources online because if we're talking about mental health, we have to share the resources. But you leaving us? You leaving? No, I just have to plug it in. Okay, the okay, got, okay. No, man, I'm not plug it in. And self-help is actually... I, I, I said self-help before because, I mean, if them decide that so they're not going to do therapy, then the next best thing is to try to help yourself. But it really doesn't work because you need a professional... Um, to go through the, 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 the steps with you, mm. right? And, yeah, the next part, may I say after, nami.org, but you can. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to talk about this poll real quick because uh, we have 40 votes. We got it to 40. And, unfortunately, 52% of people have either seriously considered suicide or know somebody close to them who wow. has. Yeah, well, that's just really insane. Wow. So, Because... 
I'm not sure. Now, don't get me wrong. I've interviewed people that talked about, you know, considering suicide. But I don't, at least I, not to my knowledge, know anybody personally, like I said, at least not to my knowledge, that has tried to commit suicide, and I haven't, so or considered it. So is there a way to tell if somebody might have something going on, or is it, is it things that you could look for if you know you need to check in on somebody? Here's the hard truth. Sometimes they don't show any symptoms. It's like, it's like, it's like herpes. <laughs> you can have herpes and you don't have no breakouts. Um, and so wow. sometimes you just can't tell. Yeah. It can yeah. be a happy person. It, it can be someone who, it can be someone looking like me, like you, like, like Shekina, like Shalene. You just don't know. So that's, that's one thing. So don't ever think that you're going to always know. Right. But some of the obvious things you can look at is if they're overly depressed all the time. You can know, if you know the person, then you can educate yourself on if they've had an incident in their life that has highly impacted them, like the loss of a loved one, maybe the death of a husband or the death of a wife or a divorce or a breakup or being laid off of a job and the man has several kids and a wife who doesn't work. That is high prime for, for a, a man to just A lot of pressure, lick himself a lot of pressure out. in that situation. Right. Um, a student who has graduated and cannot get a job. Um, someone who is saying to you, you know, I better get my affairs in order. Like someone who is just suddenly saying they need to get their affairs in order for what? Um, you know, like they're, they're making like finalized statement like, hmm, guess I won't be around to see that or I have to make sure everything is in place and they're not telling you why, right? Mm. Um, there's so many, the, the, the truth is there are obvious signs um, and Shalene, if you come up with any, feel free to text me, but there, there are obvious signs, and sometimes you really just don't know. But what I can say is when you know, help that person to get to professional help. Gotcha. When you have an inclination, talk to them, approach them, don't scorn them. Um, you know, approach them as, how can I help? What can I do for you? You know. Let me, let me ask you this, though, Julie, because what's interesting about you in particular is that you experienced all this pain, you experienced all of this trauma coming up, and you went into comedy. Like, you literally went into a business of making people laugh. Did that have something to do? Was that a part of your therapy? Of no, you? absolutely not. Yeah. Hobbies cannot heal you. Mm. Your hobby cannot heal you. Prime example, Robin Williams. I mean, I don't mean to, to hash out the man's name, but he was one of my favorites, okay? Right. Your hobbies cannot heal you. Only... I go, only therapy can help you because the solution has to fit the problem. You said, you said I decided to go into comedy. I didn't, I didn't go into comedy. Comedy, you can't ask them. Comedy. <laughs> comedy is just who I am. I mean, I came in here. I wasn't trying to make you guys laugh. I, laugh. I was just being me. Right. So comedy is just who I am. I wake up in the mornings and that's, this is just me when I'm not depressed and sad. and You know? Um, this is just me. So come, So all of this, what I'm doing on Instagram, no, it was always in me. It's just that because I was healed and I was able to focus on the things that I really like, then I was able to serve um, my God-given talent to the world. But if you're not, if you're not healed, then you're going to be operating from a place of pain. And no matter how you try to distract yourself, no matter how much you try to perfect your art and get satisfaction out of that, that will not heal you. So no, it's not a part of my therapy. It is a part of my joy. Mm. And you and you you said three years ago you just yeah meaning I was I re, it, it so what so all right I've been doing the therapy work for years and to be honest with you when I got diagnosed at first I was looking at the doctor and and I was like no you have borderline personality disorder not in <laughs> so I did not accept it and so I suffered that was when I was twenty one and I suffered I suffered I suffered I suffered and I attempted suicide when I was twenty eight and even after that. And the thing is, when you attempt suicide and you fail, you don't feel good. Because here you are failing at life and failing at, at death. Mm. And so you don't feel good. So it's like you're caught between a rock and a hard place. It, it, it makes you feel worse because literally there's no escape. Mm. And of course, I'm from a Christian background, so I'm thinking, am I going to go to hell if I take my life? And may I try to match it out and say, well, everybody dies with unconfessed sin. So if, if I did that... It's, it's, but I'm, 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 and I'm literally trying to match it out. So, you know, wh 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 when I 
got that deliverance um, three years ago. It was after doing years of therapy, and it happened when I was reading Proverbs. I was reading um, the first um, chapter in Proverbs. I don't remember what say. But I was reading Proverbs, and I remember just looking up from my Bible and looking around me and just not feeling that suicidal spirit anymore. Mm. Now, mind you, it would have come back several times after that, but then I had the tools and, 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 and everything to fight it off back. I had my friends to call. I had this. I had that to, to help me to make better choices. And, and each day, each month, each year, you just get better from strength to strength. So it's a process. So when do you feel like you was at a healthy place to now actually start introducing men into your life? Me not that day yet. So still no men, no men right now. No, no. All right, to tell the truth, to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, yeah be honest. <laughs> tell the be truth. Honest, be honest. So, no, no. I am single, right? Meaning I'm not, I'm not romantically or sexually involved with with men. But the truth is, the reason why that is is because I I don't know how to sift them out. I haven't processed that as yet. So mm. everybody is suspect. Mm. Everybody is suspect. Um. And it's all types of men. I get 23-year-olds coming up to me. I get 40-year-olds. I get 30. I get, and they're just from everyone. I don't know. I'm like, Lord, I don't even know. How. So I can't even give any advice on that because I'm not at that place yet. Even though I'm 42, uh, even though I'm 42 and stuff like that, um, I'm just not at that place just yet. But if a guy should come along and uh, you know, I feel comfortable and I feel like he can understand me and I can understand him and, and we are good communicators, then absolutely I would give it a try. So it's not a situation where I'm signed off men. I'm not a man hater all of a sudden. <laughs> but, you know, it w- the, the screening process is a little bit tighter. Mm. I think that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds like um, any fellas interested, you can go ahead and shoot your shot. It's not like she's getting a little bit more open to this whole situation. Yeah. Healed. <laughs> <laughs> Healed, what what's the relationship healed um, men. Cause healed men. I would imagine that that was pretty difficult, you know, when you really found out that your dad, you know, truly had love for you and wanted to. That was to, hard. Yeah. So what's the relationship that you have with your mom now? What's the situation? Uh no, so I love my mom and then, you know, she's not well per se. Got you. And uh, so I don't really have me, I don't have the, the time nor the capacity to really take on these things with her. I just have to love her because she's elderly now and I have to take care of her. So yeah, I just had to lay that at the foot of the cross and move on. Really? Yeah, and it's fine because when I look at my mom, no, you see, all right, so those are the bad things, you know. But there are things good that I learned from her. You know, just how to carry myself, how to speak. Uh, my command of the English language, how to pu- do public speaking, how to dress modestly, um, you know, little things that ladies should know. She taught me those things as well. So I have to just hang on to those good parts and, and the rest of it just lay it at the cross. My relationship with my dad now is very, 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 very good. And he's so sensitive to me right now. Like, he doesn't want to do anything <laughs> to upset me. Like, the other day he said, why are you that? Because, you know, older parents don't really like the internet that much. And he's like, why are you dancing up and down the internet like some idiot? And I'm like, huh. And I went to his wife, who she loves me very much. And I'm like, Steph, I'm not coming back down to daddy because daddy said I'm dancing on the internet like an idiot. I'm not coming back. And she cussed him. Oh, and wow. then daddy called me and said, Julie. He started to cry. <laughs> 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 Julie, your father loves you. Don't I tell you that I love you down to the ground you walk on? And Julie, I didn't mean it. And da, da, da. So our relationship is really good. Good. So we look, wow. we got a question. We got a question from a loyal supporter. So shout out to Janelle S. Walker. Shout out. Just joined a YouTube membership. Shout out to you, Janelle. And Janelle has a question. Janelle says, Julie, did you ever apologize to your dad? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I had to, you know, and... I just had to flat out apologize. I, I explained why I behaved that way, but I didn't make it justify what I did. So I, I, I told him all the incidences, and when I told him, he started to cry, of course. Wow. Yes, I remember. And I'm like, Dad, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And, you know, I love you. I respect you. You did your best. And every Father's Day, I have to remind him, Dad, because he's going to call me and say, sorry, I couldn't be there for you. I said, Dad, shut up. Trust me. You did your best. I love you. I wouldn't change you for any other dad in the world. So, yeah, absolutely. I had to apologize. Is, is there anything outside of not, you know, spewing the toxic, you know, lies or just the toxic narrative for the other parent? 
Is there anything that the parent that's actually the main caretaker of the child, is there anything else that you would advise them do to improve the, you know, the, the, the raising of the, of the child in that situation? Take care of themselves. Because that's, you can't pour from one. it. That's it. Take care of yourself. Because if you're not mentally okay, um, you can't look after the child. And also lean on the other partner a little bit more. I know that that might be hard because maybe the, the man don't want to um, provide and stuff like that. But take care of yourself and depend on family. They say that it takes a village to raise a child. And it's very, 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 very true. Mm. Um, so if you don't have a literal village, like this person lived there, that person lived there, you, you can use um, WhatsApp <laughs> or a phone call. You know, have other family members help you to raise the child if it's even just a call or just an opinion or talk. But don't try to do it by yourself. Don't be superwoman or even superman. Just don't be superwoman because no man is an island and we were not built to try to do things on our own. Not even God does things without the involvement of man. I'm so glad you said that because I, I, I think about when I was growing up and that was something my mom really took pride in. You know, it was like, you know, Father's Day will come. I'm the mom and the dad, you know. It was like, you don't, we don't need him. You know, we don't need that help and that type of deal. And I think a lot of young men and young ladies grow up in that type of situation where the mom or the dad invests so much into the kid that they don't really have anything else. And my mom recently actually just got married last year. Ooh. And our relationship, her entire being, her entire existence has improved. Yeah. And I and I find it is because she is finally taking time to invest in herself, mm -hmm. you know, and that just looks different. Like the, as a kid, and maybe kids don't understand, but I would think I was a pretty good kid. I think if my mom would have told me that there's some things I couldn't have or some things I couldn't do because she needed to take time to do her thing. Yeah. I think I would have been pretty receptive to that. But I guess it's hard to, to say you now. Don't know. You I, don't know. I really don't know. But I would advise the same thing that you're saying for those parents to really take care of themselves. Because at the end of the day, like you said, it, they can't, you know, give Pour to the kid. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Super important. Man, Julie, let me tell you, your testimony is powerful. Right. Okay. I, we've never we've never touched suicide on this show before. Oh, I know, let me Definitely. stop joking with her because people might think I'm gimmicking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You can have fun. I mean, it's it's it's, nah, it's in the past now. It's a part of your story. And, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I I, I, I'm not laughing at it. I can laugh about it. And when I'm talking about it, I'm, I'm not awkward or feeling uncomfortable because I have done the heart work, being in the therapy work. So if you checked me four years from now and I was telling this, I would have still been upset and hurt. Yeah. You know, um, but... Yeah. Let me tell you something. I oh my goodness. All I know is let me tell you my so I got I got parents. That's um from the <laughs> I got I got a Caribbean center. My 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 mom is Panamanian. And um I remember I brought a woman around her. This was like high schoolish and she was just a, she was a little she was a little but this is how this this how this how your mom coached you about that. I, I bring her home. She my mama said, "She crazy." <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> and that just mean don't bring her back around. Right. But it's 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 some more to it. And I think you write about that, man. Like just how I actually have I heard somebody recently interviewed. They said it a different way. It's, it take. He actually said it takes a village to destroy a child. And I think that's that's accurate because. We can do. <laughs> so that's different. We can play. No, really, because we, we, we need to play our part where we can. Because, again, you saying, like, the guys, if you see a woman in that situation, yo, keep, just stay away from that young lady. And I know it's hard because. See I, a woman, you have to clarify. If you see a woman in what situation? If you see a, a woman who's situation. in a vulnerable, distressed situation. Such as? As a woman who's going through a lot. Like, you, she's clearly experiencing trauma. She those be, those yeah. women are the easiest to manipulate. Oh, so you're saying don't try to get involved with them, yes. but still try to help them as a, try to help them to get help as as, as much as you can. Is that is that is that really what you would advise? Because you you because I, I think the don't get involved with them is the best policy. That's the, but but, that's what it is. but would you really seek to help this person in some way if and they see, weren't? See, to, again, disengaging is one aspect of helping. Mm. Like literally. Saying like, look, listen, I'm not even me. I'm not even good for you. You need to, you need to go over here in mm -hmm. a corner by yourself or get some help. And I'm not rocking with you. 
that takes discipline. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of discipline because most people are in relationships for self satisfaction. I don't like what you're saying, though. I'm not rocking with you. All you have to say is, I don't have the capacity to help you in the way that you need. I wouldn't have said it just like that to her. You know, I'm just yeah. saying. I'm, 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 words. That words. sounds better. <laughs> but long story short, I think it's very important, especially, you know, as, 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 as guys. And this is a tough one. I'm talking to my guys here. Y'all know what y'all have experienced them kind of women. You know what I'm talking about if you're really out there. Why you have to say it like that, sir? Because they out, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's in abundance. Yes. Like, you've all ran into <laughs> a woman that you know you ain't got no business. You know, it, it's, <laughs> it's different these days. I mean, because things, you, you know, we have a lot more information out there. So I have, you know, encountered women who were recently medicated. You know, because I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. even, even when I, I've asked a lot of questions. So I'll find out if they're on some medication or something. You know, or they have like... I want to just plug, mental health medication is nothing to be... If you're with a woman and she's on medication, that's not a reason for you to not get involved with her. Now, it's if not. she is... But it, now, is a re it, it is something to acknowledge. Right. Absolutely. And it is a potential red flag. I, I would agree with that. No, 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 no. no, no. It's, actually, will... it's actually... It's actually... A green flag in that situation because what is she that? taking Xanax regularly? Listen, now, now we're talking. Now no, we're talking no, no. a good conversation. Make a learn. Make me learn. If she's taking medication and she's seeking treatment and she's, um, you know, taking her medication as she should, it means that's a sign of responsibility. It's, it's like you're saying that you're not going to date someone because they have rheumatoid arthritis. No, 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 no. So here's a yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. the reality of the situation is some medicines are meant to treat. Mm -hmm. And some things are uh, going to help you cure what you're dealing with. The reality of the situation is when you're taking these antidepressants, you're, that's not a long-term solution at all. Let that interject. And see, antidepressant medication is, it goes, all right, so it's two ways. You can either get therapy by just talk therapy or you get therapy by talk therapy and medication. Medication can be short-term and or long-term. It just depends on what the professional says. So if it is something that she has, he or she has to do long term, then the medication has to be taken long term alongside therapy. But what the medication does is that when you take a, an antidepressant or a mental health medication, it allows you, it, it 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 allows you chemically and mentally to absorb what is being told to you in talk therapy, so that you de develop different thinking patterns, your, your brain, because it has neuroplasticity, it learns to think differently, behave differently, and after a time when you've absorbed enough in talk therapy, they can wean you off the medication slowly, slowly, slowly until you don't need it. But sometimes you have some mental health medications, like maybe schizophrenia, I'm not sure, that you have to continue taking medication for the rest of your life. And if the person is taking the medication, it's not a red flag. They have a situation that they know that they have, and they have decided to take medication for it. See, let me tell you why that's a red flag to me. Because, because I'm thinking about getting into a relationship with this person. All the things I got to think about, including taking care of them. And now before I even get into it, I got to think about your health. I think that's a red flag. You don't have to. They are already thinking about it. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call a, a friend. <laughs> Charlene. I, listen. I put a, I dropped a poll and I probably I probably took it I, I just dropped a poll I probably took it too easy too easy on y'all but I said would you date someone who is on medication for mental challenges issues mental health some type of thing and I put on there yes no and depends on the issue so most people are taking the easy way out and choosing depends on the issue but me personally I would definitely walk away from that situation. I mean see here's the thing I mean if, all if, right if you have you know what if you have options. Can it, we take a num a, a, a phone a friend? Listen, let me know. What, I, I'm open to it. Sure. I'm open sure. to it. How, tell how, me, tell me what's on your mind. You want to text it or you want to say it? You gonna you gonna come on? Come on, come on in. No, 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 no. no okay. then text it, text it, text it, text it. So why 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 does being text? I think we are allowed to have preferences in relationships. Yes, I was to just know about what you to want to deal that. with. Some people want to date people with kids. Some people don't want to date people with kids. Some people want to date people with mental health issues. Some people prefer that slate not to be there. Me, that's just a preference of mine because I've actually had a situation like that actually in the past. And I kind of know what that comes with because it's just, it truly is some things that you know this person is bringing to the relationship that they're dealing with. And you may not want to deal with 
what that comes with. That's fair. Especially because some of the stuff that that medication comes with runs so deep. It runs so deep. And I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people that's on these medications, they're not in therapy alongside of it probably just as much as they should be. That's the issue, yeah. And they just relying on these medications. And eventually, what's going to happen is you're just going to need more and more and more as you continue to take it over a span of time. Yes. So it's very dangerous because let me tell you, them pharmaceutical companies are dangerous. They are dangerous and they don't necessarily have our best intentions. And the, I, I just I just know for sure that's not the greatest long-term solution for us. So, I'm, again, I'm not saying somebody can't get out of it. We can heal from just about anything. If a person told you that she has high blood pressure and she has to take medication for the rest of her life, would that be a red flag for you? If she has high blood pressure. That's a red flag for me. Because why? I mean, it come is. on. High blood pressure? No, it is. Yes, it I is. mean, high blood pressure. Like, what are you eating? I, this thing. I'm a healthy. I am healthy for the rest gen- of her life. <laughs> generally healthy. Don't get me wrong. For the rest <laughs> of her life. <laughs> Look, I just had high blood raised. pressure. Hold on, hold I on, just wait. had high blood Shalim, pressure. Shalim, they about to get. Speech. They about to get on your heartburn. He started. He started. <laughs> they about to get on your heartburn that you had. I did. I'm healed hey, though. I'm healed. <laughs> I'm healed. I'm healed though. That's the thing. I'm healed. Yes, Shalene. Yes. Yeah. Hold on. Wait. Wait. The people can't. The people can't hear you. I'll repeat it for her. Does no, everyone in no, here I check don't, their blood pressure? I don't check my blood day. pressure. On a daily I, I, basis? No. no. I, I only know I don't have high blood pressure because when I went for the uh, EK, when I got the EKG before they did my blood pressure test, they said it was straight. All right. But all right. So I guess what you guys are saying. So, so, but you so, may have it known. So, so well, this is a whole conversation happening right now, just so y'all know. <laughs> Sorry. So the question that, is do you know that? I'm, <laughs> So, a whole, so they're asking, they're pretty much trying to uh, ask Ryan if he knows and aware of his high blood pressure situation. But I mean, at the end of the day, listen. But this all is, right, hold on. I want to say something because, all right. So I don't negate your point. Okay. That it's a, it's a red flag for you. Totally, totally valid. And you do have the right to choose do you want to deal with this? Because a person who is taking mental health medication, their um, issue becomes your issue. Your yep. issue becomes their issue because you're coming into one. You know, if that's something that you don't want to deal with, you don't have the capacity to deal with, that's your decision. But I don't want it to be a narrative where, okay, um, if a person is on mental health medication, then they are not safe. That's absolutely not true. No. They are, they are just as safe as anyone out there who you know, has diabetes, has um, ca- cancer that they're treating, has high blood pressure, has hypoglycemia, any, all of those little normal things. And... People have, I think that's the point Charlene was trying to make. People have these little illnesses that are just untreated that you just don't know. And just because the person with the mental health situation is honest enough to tell you that they're on medication, it's boom. It's a red flag. It's a, it's a, it's a so I'm, a, I'm actually going to take a line from Dr. Bobby Price. A lot of this stuff is common, but it's not normal. That's unfortunate. I get you. And see, that's the thing. This stuff is common, but it's not normal. We should not be sick. It's no, people. that's true. I agree. Like, these things happen due to us getting in the way of ourselves. True. Like, life happening to us, our diets going, you, you, the things that we put into our body, the things that we're not exercising and doing. So, that's, the, that, that, that's why I think it's still important for you to set boundaries around what you want. If I come to a relationship with AIDS, I can't get mad if a woman don't want to be with me. Hey, hey babe, listen. I got AIDS, you know. You should accept but that. But AIDS, AIDS is not tantamount no, 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 to no, 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 no. Here's the thing: I can live with AIDS. I can live with AIDS for the rest of my life. No, but you having AIDS and somebody deciding to be with you is not tantamount to you having a mental illness and you're being treated. No, but still, yeah. no, what, no, what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying all things. We, you, you used cancer. We, you used a, a lot of different examples. I'm just <laughs> you hear pulling, what he's saying. So he says, since you I'm dropped out permanently, he no, dropped out really, permanently. I'm pulling examples. AIDS, cancer. AIDS is not treatable at that point. No, but here's the thing. Okay, get, so Magic Johnson HIV. treated it. It didn't match HIV. 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 Okay, better one. Still, <laughs> lo and behold, I cannot get mad at a woman who considers that a red flag. That's that's okay. And I just said it's your capacity. Right, however, right, right. however, in general, it I don't want. I we have to get away from that narrative that says. And by the way, a person with a mental illness is not half as dangerous as somebody with HIV. But notwithstanding. Because you can treat that. But anyhow, and I'm not trying to be biased or anything because I do take your point and I respect, if, you, if that's a red flag for you, 
all power to you. There's no scar, no hit. It's not. It's it's just a thing for you, right? Right. It's just right. a preference, and that's fine. Right, exactly. That's that's exactly. Don't tell. Don't use your platform to to purport that as a red flag. It's a it's a preference for you, and that's totally absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. But the narrative should not be that if someone has a mental illness and they are in treatment for it and they are healing and they're able to go to work, hold on a job, they're able to relate to people, they go out, they're not socially awkward. But in order to do this, they are in treatment and on medication. That is not a red flag. That's a person taking responsibility. So when, and, I, and when, I, when on, I say... A lot of people, a lot of people, I don't mean to cut you, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's but fine. Jamaicans, we do say I don't mean to cut you. I don't mean to cut you. <laughs> A lot of people are untreated. So you guys might think that you're totally mentally okay, and this is not a stab at anybody, right? Everything, not, not, not at all. You might think that you are totally okay when, in fact, you have some unhealthy coping mechanisms that are undiscovered as well. So, you know, what I'm saying is don't be too hard on the person. And this is a man or a woman. If you're a woman trying to date a man or a man trying to date a woman, don't be so hard on the person if you realize they have a personality disorder or a mental illness. Once they're getting treatment, it, it shouldn't be at the... I can't say what should or shouldn't be, but it doesn't have to be at the forefront of your decision making when trying to date somebody. Now, yeah. the red flag, I can, I can, I don't want to take it back per se, but I can understand take how red flag, back. red flag may be a little, a little, a little rough. Oh, but hold my hand. Still, hold my hand. Still, oh. still, <laughs> still, I think their mental fitness should be priority though. So it, to me. <clears throat> If they are medicated, because the thing, we all got issues. I think in today's day and age, and I keep saying that because things are completely different now, I think a lot of us have anxiety and, like, just anxiety issues. I think everybody is, like, super stressed anxious. and anxious. And I think it's severe. I think all of us have severe anxiety. I just think the level of severity now is so extreme that it has to be medicated. It has to be determined and, and, and you know, uh, diagnosed in this way. But the thing is, I do things to medicate myself, right? I wake up early, I get a workout. I know that helps with anxiety and depression. I invest in reading the, either the Bible or the Quran. That, I mean, that alone, I mean, I could read a verse or two from the Bible and be affirmed enough for 18 to 24 hours. So my thing is, if they're at the point where they're on actual medication from a doctor that's prescribed to them, I'm just kind of like, it's all it's already got a lot of things to take into consideration. Why choose this one when I could just potentially find somebody else? I mean, so you you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a lot. Listen, they said they said check the phone. They said check the phone. <laughs> friends is typing back there. I mean, this is a good conversation. Look, <laughs> it's typing. We just had thirty five votes on this thing, and forty nine percent says depending on the issue. Twenty percent people say pretty much absolutely not, and thirty one percent. I know 31% of people said say definitely not. not. And then 20% said they can do it. So pretty much everybody, I think, who vote on this poll has some level of skepticism or apprehension. No, you said about so what 20% said they would. They it's will, not, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> 20% people said they would. Yes, but what, the no, majority of people have some level no, of apprehension about it. No, but you said pretty much that. everybody. Yeah. 80% is not pretty much. I, I, no, no, no. <laughs> you said 31% said absolutely not. Yeah. And then yeah. you have um, 20% saying... Twenty um, percent said I yes, can do it. Yes, and then and then how uh, much that left? Fifty. Most of yeah, most of other people percent. said depends on the depends issue. Depends on the issue. And you have to take that at face value. You can't say that they're taking the easy way out. That's a bias. <laughs> That's a bias that you're putting in the post. So don't don't <laughs> don't do that. No 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 no. It is serious. Don't don't do that. Right. Okay. Because the, they are they are giving you this. You're gonna go through the computer and punch them in the face. No. no. They have no reason to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, I'm not sure. They're so not that's sure. what that is. So you have a positive, you have 20% of people who would do it. So mm -hmm. let me ask you this, Julie. Let me ask you this then. If hold I on, say, if I on. change. Ask me that question. But okay. What I was saying to you when you said that you get up and for you, yeah. you, you can exercise, it gives you dopamine and stuff. That's excellent. Um, and I, I would presume that if that works for you, you don't have a mental illness, which is good. But some people, that will not work for them. They have to do therapy and or medication. So I was just trying to make that delete. So wait, I got a really good question in here. But in, uh, in first. Really good question. Wait, this is, first. what if you. Wait, 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 you got a question. We're with her. No, 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 no. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. Guys, we love these questions. 
but y'all gotta join that YouTube oh, membership. You know what? I'm y'all, sorry. I thought that was the membership. Y'all gotta send that. Cause listen, we I'm wanna sorry. take good care, aye, aye. y'all. We want y'all to this ask Julie questions. Join money. that membership. Ask the people them question. This is not about money. No, no. <laughs> Give, no, so we got hey, the old hey, community, hey, Julie. Hey, hey, it's community. Hey, it's community. Hey. It's community. Give the people knowledge for free, and they will pay you for it. So okay, so okay, I got so I got two people I want to talk to right now. This is JD, mental health. J- Jade, Jade. And then you just talk about what if they don't have access to therapy? And you really are pay hard in with the subscription. You know, ask them questions. They got access to nine dollars and Jade, nine cents. Look, Jade, Jade, <laughs> we're gonna look out for you only because of Julie access too. So Jade, we're gonna look out you, but we love you. We want you to join the YouTube membership. Candace, Candace Cook, let me tell you, Thank Candace you very Cook, much. you need to join the membership today because Candace is so active. Yeah. See, I can tell Candace, you listen, we, you join the membership, we're going places with you. <laughs> so go ahead and go ahead and throw that question. Go ahead and throw that question in there. Candace, sweetheart. Okay. Join it when you feel to. So Oh, Janelle thinks she's slick. I see what she did. She just I reacts the question as a member. So let me ask you, what if you were already in a relationship with a woman? It's for Ryan, and she developed this illness over time. How would you handle that situation? Mm. This one for me? Who said who, who said yeah. this one was for me? Uh, I'm curious. <laughs> because you're okay. know how <laughs> So now this is the thing. If I'm am I in a committed relationship? I'm in a committed relationship. <laughs> we got a, a non committed relationship. So if I'm cheating on her ass. This is the thing. Oh, this, me, this, 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 this is the thing. If I'm married to this woman, you're I have, married, I have yes. commi- if I'm married, yes, this is something that we will work through and I would do whatever it takes to overcome this issue until the end. But if is if I'm not married and I'm not actually have committed to this union for the rest of my life and she's just my girlfriend and it was still committed relationship, I would I'm just being very real. I would gauge the severity of the situation and I would evaluate if I have the capacity and the resources to to be able to help and support the campaign. Mm. But if I don't have the capacity, and I don't have the resources, I'll be honest with you. It's unfortunate, but I cannot continue this relationship. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Rich, rich and fit. Look how much mistake you make since the meeting start. And you too. So just so y'all know, the producer's in the back, and he said, wow, that was crazy to Ryan's answer. Yeah, cr- so, crazy yeah. meaning you totally agree? We gotta get him no. a camera. We gotta yeah, get him yeah, a camera. Yeah, we, we, now we gotta get the producer. We a camera, get the producer now, a camera. now he's getting involved in the show right yeah. now. But and I, I'm just being I'm just being real. You, you agree with what Ryan said. So why you if you agree, why you wasn't fixing the things properly at the beginning of the party? <laughs> 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 How come it's just no you have I have moat? It's me you have strength for. I'm gonna be honest though. Listen, you gotta understand, anytime you take on, you have to know who you're dealing with. Get, I think on. that was a very mature answer, though, because it's, it's true. You got to evaluate what they're bringing and you got to make sure that you have the capacity because it's a lot of relationships that end because they get themselves into something they did not know the scope of work that, yeah, that was you know, needed you to know make what? it be successful. You know what? That's just weird because everybody has something that if, if it's not one thing, it's the other thing. And, and, and um, Shakina was saying that. When she had, because I don't know how much of it she wants me to tell, but um, her son, her youngest, her youngest son, Jonah, he had, what was it, a kidney problem, a heart tumor, and he had to get a heart transplant. Mm. I don't remember, but it ain't, it ain't serious. It was very serious. Um, so her son was basically sick and was about to die if he didn't get a certain type of surgery. And so that incident brought out mental health issues that she had to deal with. It made her kind of a different person in, during that time. And her husband and she would have had to deal with those things together. So what I'm saying is that even when you're married, even when you're committed, that's right, even when you're commit, in a committed relationship, there are issues that uh, all the evaluation that you did, all the Myers-Briggs tests that you did on your partner in your <laughs> mind that you did initially, that goes out the window because life has now presented itself at your door as a union. And I'm saying you could screen the person as much as you want, and you have the right to do that. I'm not knocking you for it, right? I'm just saying that sometimes you may not see all the things at first. It's a gamble. What if you start out with someone who is on medication, and 
they have worked so hard at healing that they have become, they have grown into this beautiful person. And you took the chance on them and you married them. And also, you could have done your screening and you married someone who seems to be on an even keel, mentally stable. And then, baps, something happened in the marriage and you have this horrible person to live with for the rest of your life. So you really, you really don't know. And that's why I don't really like the idea of saying it's a red flag. But as I say, you know, just like my concerns are valid, yours are totally valid. So, so are you, so, so is yours. So I just wanted to, you know. I'm gonna be. Well, I, th I think this. I think that this is an excellent discussion. It it is, and and okay. Let's just say, Julie. Let's say I say, you know what? I'm gonna be open to this. And this young lady, she's got some mental challenges or some concerns that Easy. require. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It requires. I'm sorry. That's what my mom said. That's what my mom said. <laughs> so so look. What if I okay? Let's say I did take. I decided to take this relationship on. What are some things that I could do to protect myself from, you know, over investing, you know, and also or I'm biting off more than you can chew. Biting off more than I can chew, right? Everybody bites off more than they can chew. It's just how you deal with it, and so. You, if you go in a relationship, it don't make sense. You go in and let, let me see what's going to happen right here. Because what you're seeing to happen will happen. So just go all in. No, okay, fine. Say so you decide to go all in and you know that this person has this issue. You have to know your own boundaries, right? Um, you have to communicate with them and let them understand that, okay, these are some things that... Because that person has to be in a position to hear you out as well. It's not a one-sided thing. Because right. you have your mental health too. And so both of you have to have, and that's why I say, if they're on medication and dealing with it, it's safe to proceed because they can have a conversation with you. And so you tell them, okay, um, these are your triggers as a man and as a person who is mentally healthy, and they can tell you, okay, these are my triggers. You can help them to make sure that they go to therapy. Um, you can help them to make sure that they, 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 you can help to keep them accountable. It can become a group work, right? Right. And, um, you know, if you're not open, there's no such thing as over investing. Is that you either in or you're out? So mm. I, I don't know what to say to you with regards to that. You either in or you're out. Mm. What the, what you shouldn't do is enable the person. So if they have a bad habit, or if they have something that's not good, then you have to love them enough to tell them, hey, this isn't good. And I think both of us can work. So don't tell them stop that or change that or or fix that. Say I think both of us can work on you know fixing this. And is there anything about me you want you want to see improve? I think you can improve on this and, you know, together we can grow from strength to strength. That's really the better way. And that's dealing with any issue in a marriage. Mm. And so I think that if you decided to, to invest in someone that has a mental health issue, that's how you should approach um, that. Mm. I don't know if that makes no, sense. No, I, I got it. I know. Yeah. I, I got it. I think that's some, some wise counsel. If somebody was to choose to do that, mm. I'm still standing firm. I'm still standing firm standing. on that. But but I do think that this is something that people really deal with. And the, the reality of the situation is I also think, I also 100% agree with you, is that it's so many other people out here walking around with issues and they haven't been diagnosed or given any kind of level of assistance or, you know, anything prescribed to them in terms of help. So you might be dating somebody right now that needs to be heavily medicated. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and crazy. Right, right. <laughs> so I get that. I get that. I get that. <laughs> But that's the thing. See, I, I respect people that understand. That, that is how I laugh. <laughs> I, un, I respect people that understand and have sought out and realized they've identified that a problem exists. Shout out to y'all. Because, you know. You realize he ate the entire bowl of grapes and didn't give us any? He didn't give us not one grape. Yo, shout out to, yo, Jay. Jay, we got wow. Jay. Shout out to Jay. See? Look, see? Ask a question right Jay, now. Jay, whatever you want, Jay. Whatever Ask you want. Ask a question right now. Shout out to Jay. And, and it's going to get answered. And this is the thing. So shout out to Jay. So Jay is official because we want to get 100 in the next 30 days. Welcome. Jade officially makes our 10th member. This means that we are going to feature our top 10 members on the top of our home page. So just wait till after the wait till after this live. But on the top of our home check page, we're gonna have a member section. So make sure y'all update y'all profile pics. Cause if you single or not single, there's, there's gonna be some people probably sending y'all some messages real, real soon. <laughs> so let me tell you, because everybody who follows Harley Initiated is either fresh out of love, looking for love, needs some love, 
everything mm-hmm. is all about love and, and healthy and, relationships. I mean, and, and really they're, they're working Rescue they're working me. on getting better. Right. So big shout out to everybody in this conversation. Shout out. I want to have a, because of you you actually inspire something um Julia I, I don't think after this one that <laughs> we, we haven't had enough mental health conversations. So I think that's something that we it's because I could tell the people enjoyed it. I think this is something that we could introduce to the platform a little bit more. Um, because these are very, very important conversations. And although y'all might be getting upset with some of the perspectives of, you know, myself and Ryan about the, the red flags, I think bullet, a lot bullet. of people, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a real, we just the only ones that, you know, got the cojones to actually the say cojones, cojones. these things. But Julie, let me tell you, I appreciate you bringing this wisdom in this conversation to our people, because you probably even saved some lives in here today. I don't know. So don't thank know you so much. I don't to accept compliments. If I start looking weird, it's okay. Let me see. That's how you look weird? Put the camera on. Zoom in. <laughs> Zoom in. Zoom in. <laughs> no, Julie, you, listen, you, you, you're you, good with me, man. Like, I, I really like you. You're, I mean, I don't know if I expect this kind of energy yeah, from type, you. You're not my type, though. I'm not your type? Mm-mm. Oh um, man, she liked them crazy. What you say? How you say? It? How you say? It? You say I can't even do oh, that. I can't I'm, even do the boy. I'm curious. Am I your type? In terms of what? Just your, he not your type? No, because you have elf ears. I'm kidding. I do, I do have elf ears. She is, she, yo. She is taking us out. She is. She's she is taking us out the whole, she the whole time. The whole time. You see, so her red flag is elf ears, but I can't have red right. flags. No, no but that's, you can't put me in that position. Am I your type? Well, I mean, you just, you, you know that he not your type. Am I your type? I didn't say he was, my, I was kidding. Am I oh. your type? You see how that feels? Am I your type? We already talked about my red flags. I'm like, sure. <laughs> 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 we got to check your medicine cabinet right first. Here, right Let me look at that medicine cabinet. What's this? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I, I, got, I got sertraline, Paxil, Xanax. I don't remember. I got all of them. Okay. That's I'm funny. not on medication, by the way. No, not I get anymore, it. anymore. I was weaned off, and I'm being serious, I was weaned off medication about a year and a half ago. And that's done with, for those who don't know, weaning off medication is not something you decide on your own. Um, the psychiatrist or a general practitioner will prescribe the medication for you, and they will work in tandem with the talk therapist, because the talk therapist can't prescribe medication for you, but the psychiatrist has the capacity to um, prescribe medication for you and or do talk therapy if they are trained in that. So. My, I had a psychiatrist, I didn't have a general practitioner, and the psychiatrist weaned me off medication, and that's a safe way to come off it, because I didn't address the medication part. So I know we're joking about it and stuff, but yes, I was definitely on medication, um, on and off for maybe 10 years. So it didn't, the, uh, in that on and off thing doesn't help at all, it just makes things worse. Um, steadily for about three and a half to four years, and then I was weaned off of it. Julie, I want you to, at this point, I want you to tell the people how they can get in contact with you, how they can see and find out more about you, what platform they need to reach out to you, because I know you got some you got some loyal supporters today. Facts. Okay. So, do I do my American accent? No, no, <laughs> hit, hit, him, hit him with the heavy patois. The it's heavy really, patois right really now. It's really bad. Oh, you want every patois? Every patois. No, me not. Did you? What you say? Well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say every patois. Every patois. Well, yeah. <laughs> Don't play with me. Guys, you can find me on Instagram as I am Julie Mango, on TikTok as I am Julie Mango, on YouTube as I am Julie Mango, on Twitter as I am Julie Mango, on Facebook as I am Julie Mango. I am Julie Mango. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and it's very important. Throw in the I am. Yes. Throw in the I am. You don't want to see the other Julie Mango. <laughs> you know, the no, other Julie Mango is my friend. You mean the, Insta- <laughs> <laughs> the Instagram account? <laughs> Excuse there are me. a few Julie Mangos. <laughs> Excuse me. The other Julie Mangos, the, if you go on Instagram and you see like other people with the username Julie Mango, so we, me and almost every other Julie Mango on Instagram have become friends because they are always mistakenly tagged as me. I believe it. And then I see them responding and being so annoyed. So I would reach out to them and say, hey, so sorry. And I'm like, hey, it's okay. And then we follow each other. And I even met like two of them when I did um, a talk in Cayman, a mental health talk. One of them came up to me and said, my stuff kind of helped her with her mental health issues, you know? That's dope. She's Julie underscore Mango. I think you done helped a lot of people that watch tonight. And guys, I just dropped Julie Mango's Instagram profile. It's in the description. I just dropped it in the chat. So make sure y'all follow. And uh, this is the thing. I want to do something very special for y'all. So 
All of our YouTube members, anybody who joined last week, anybody who joined this week, look out for a member post where I'm going to drop that link to schedule a call where you're actually going to speak in person with myself and Tyshawn. So this is going to be dope. And the second thing is what I'm about to do, guys. I'm actually about to drop a survey. It's a brief, like, six prompt or six question segment survey, and it's specifically to get a better idea of what your listening experience has been and what you want us to bring to the show. Because like I said, guys, we're going crazy. We're going to have live every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. We got three uh, transformational episodes dropping a week outside of that. So about, what, five episodes a week? Minimum. Minimum. Five episodes a week minimum, guys. And we want to grow this thing to be shooting at least six times or six fresh episodes a week. So please join the membership. And guys, look out for the survey I'm about to drop right now. And listen, because right listen, guys, make it just the same way we want y'all to get better, we going to get better, and we want this platform to get better. And in order for us to do that, we need your help. So y'all make sure you let us know. Julie is, <laughs> Julie okay, is you get, trolling you, me listen, right now. You get Julie trolling, but trolling what on I want right now. you to make sure you do is to make sure you fill out that survey, guys, so we can bring you the absolute best the best version of ourselves and the best version of this platform. Somebody Big said. shout out to Candace, <laughs> who also just came another loyal supporter. Shout out to you, Candace. Much love. The early initiators. Shout out to Candace. The early Cook. initiates. Yeah. We're gonna take care of you guys. And check this out what Jay we'll said. Jay, Jay, she likes, she likes Julie. She said, Miss Julie challenged y'all today. I love it. Mm, I would I agree you, with Jay. that. I would agree with that. We like when the ladies come on to challenge us. It was a light challenge, but you know. <laughs> she was lightweight. Was she light was challenge. lightweight. It was a light challenge. But if that makes you feel better about yourself, no problem. She said, big up, big up, Julie. Jamaica to the world. Big up, big up yourself. Big up, big up. (laughs) (laughs) So, yes, y'all, go ahead. The survey is in there. We're about to end the show, but I want to make sure all of you guys go ahead and tap into that survey. We should also put that in the community in there. Make sure we put that in the post. Yep, I'm going to put that in both. both, uh, Yeah. Yep. We'll do, a, po- we'll do a public the, post for the community. For those who are going to call in and have a personal conversation with either this guy or this guy, it, it depends on the type of voice you want. If you want a smooth, creamy voice, but kind of baby sounding, that's him. If you want an excited, <laughs> husky voice, that's him. It all depends. That's right. But call nice and husky. Yes. Co- like she complimented yes. Andrew Shade at nice the same time. Nice and husky. That's a Jamaican way. But listen, Julie, again, thank you so much. Oh, wait. Can you guys, this is not a commercial. We don't work for them or anything, but for the persons who are interested in mental oh, health. Oh, no, we don't. No, no. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no, we don't know those people. Who? Nami? I'm joking with you, Julie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, because if you ever, if you no, ever. No, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and no, plug resources, them. resources, resources. Oh, go ahead and plug okay. Go ahead and plug them. Um, www.nami.org. That's where you get all your mental health resources. It's a, I think it's a government or a non-profit oh, organization. Oh, wait, say, say, you got to say yeah. it slow www.nami.org. So w w w dot n a m i dot org. I got it. I'm gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop that site in there in the chat right now. So it's the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So you can get your resources there. It's not meant to replace therapy. But if you're interested in finding out how to, you know, get help or someone can get help, you go there and that's that's your resource. And as I said, this is that I'm not affiliated with them in any way. It's not like I'm working for better help or anything. Um, this is just this is a website that I used to go on, you know, to help myself and to help others. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We had up to 128 people on this live. I thought it was amazing. Only for our second one. This video, Julie, if you, if you don't know, it's probably going to get about 15,000, maybe even 30,000 views. We're going crazy with this live thing. So Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And Julie, again, thank you so much for coming all the way to Atlanta to be here on this platform with us and our beautiful people. Virginia, you know somebody there at Atlanta before me come down here. What the, oh, wait, <laughs> she <wait>. going there. <laughs> when Tyshawn don't understand, that's when I know wait, it's deep. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Say, I got I to get this. Say that one more time. Say the same I way. I said you knew. No, 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 no. Say the patois. Bridget, you know somebody come at Atlanta a long time before we come right here, so. I know. But this the this the first time with us. So this the this the time that count. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. So for this me is the first out. time she's here in Hardly Initiated Studios. Yeah. Yes. And this I got a feeling it won't be the last. Thank you so much for being here with us today. <laughs> Julie, I'm your type. Hey, don't touch me back. Not and Julie. listen, <laughs> thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of Hardly Initiated. Woo! We are.